<sighs> All right, welcome back, everyone. We are here with another episode of Speedruns from the Crypt. It is a bi-weekly horror hotfix. We show off all of horror's spookiest games, and it's kind of just a uh, year-round horror block. Hope you're all having a wonderful day today. It's nice to actually, I guess, be here this time. I know last, uh, last time we had a bit of a fun intro, but now we're kind of back to normal, which is always nice. Uh, anyway, before I do begin, I just want to say uh, that if you are watching this or on the YouTube side, uh, feel free to come on over to the Twitch side of things. Uh, we are live over at twitch.tv slash gamesdonequick, where we do a lot of uh, hotfix content. Uh, there's usually shows going every day, so feel free to come check that out. Anyway, uh, today's theme is going to be kind of more of an anniversary thing. Uh, last year, uh, we were able to celebrate uh, one of horror's largest releases with that of Resident Evil Village. And in general, I think last year was just a really good year for horror games. There's a lot of cool ones that happened. Obviously, these are both mainline GDQ events and just as the releases go on. So I figure, hey, why not we not just celebrate these ourselves? Uh, anyway, to kick things off with a celebration of 2021 horror games, uh, we'll be looking at Back for Blood to start off. Anyway, here is Back for Blood featuring Hazeblade. Take it away. Hey there, thank you. Um, hello, everybody. As Dice has said, my name is Hazeblade. Uh, I ran this game quite a bit when it was new. I was sort of the premier runner of the Nightmare difficulty with this game, uh, which we'll be doing recruit difficulty today, but I imagine we'll be talking about some of the other difficulties quite a bit uh, in terms of the comparison piece as we get the run going. But uh, uh, we'll be running the game on recruit today. As I said, it'll be all acts. So you'll see from the very beginning of the game all the way through the end, uh, there are four acts in total, lots and lots of missions uh, to fill all of that. Uh, but I am joined by three amazing people that I had the absolute joy of actually being able to compete with at an esports tournament at Twitch Rivals with uh, Team Maxi Lobes. I'll have you guys introduce yourselves. Hey, what's up? I am the Maxi Lobes. Hey, I'm Spicy. I'm Avocado. All right. Uh, so I'm going to get things kicked off here. And uh, while I'm getting my character select and everything started, Maxi, I really need you to tell everybody how this whole Team Maxi Lobes thing got started uh, on uh, Twitch Rivals Day. <laughs> oh, I got the story. I got the story. Uh, so Twitch Rivals was putting together a Back for Blood event where they were going to do uh, speed runs. Everybody had a team, and everyone had to speed run the game on uh, not Nightmare, but uh, the difficulty below, which is Veteran. So uh, th they all had teams ready. I think about three or four days prior and they were all practicing whereas I didn't have a team two hours before the event started so I, I hit up Haze Blade and Avokamu and Spicy here and I was like hey can you guys do this and they were like yeah sure <laughs> we had no practice we've never done a speedrun on veteran <laughs> it was chaos but um we took second place and That's it was right. uh, it was pretty it was pretty dang cool. I, I I'm proud of that for sure. I got to give huge shout outs to GDQ by the way because I was actually booked for what's faster that night with Carsey, and uh, like I appreciate you guys being flexible uh, oh, yeah. on that. So because <laughs> I was just like, hey guys, I got to make sure we make it. Uh, but uh, cool, we're gonna get things started here, and as soon as I lock in my character selection, uh, that will be when the timer starts. Okay, and that is say, like go or something to that effect. Yep. I will give you a countdown. Three, two, one, go. And we're off. And uh, I think a, a good place to kind of begin talking about things here definitely has to do with the fact that this game is made by the same people that made Left 4 Dead. And so you will notice a lot of parallels between those things as we get into the runs today. Uh, but as far as the differences go, one of the main differences with this game in comparison is the deck building system. And so as a result, what we've kind of ended up with is a very Left 4 Dead-esque feel, but with almost kind of like a, I guess when I think of character building, like the first thing I think of is kind of like an RPG sort of concept comes to mind. And, uh... This game kind of has that element in place pretty heavily since there's uh, sort of intentions for all of the various 
sort of uh, playable characters, so to speak. So, you know, Holly, for example, kind of has the more melee focus. Uh, the character that I'm playing, Evangelo, is more of a speed-based focus. And uh, as a result, that deck building element kind of comes into play heavily. And, you know, when you're playing online with multiple people, uh, especially on harder difficulties like Nightmare and in their most recent patch, No Hope, uh, really coordinating with your team to figure out who's going to play what and really kind of assigning your deck accordingly is a astronomical part of being able to play the game well at higher difficulty. But as Maxi Lobes mentioned, we uh, we did this run at Twitch Rivals on Veterans, so it's a, a little bit more involved than what we're doing here. But uh, ultimately, what we're trying to accomplish is more or less just getting from A to B as as quickly as possible. And so we're going to be utilizing a couple of different techniques to do that. And so my deck primarily is going to consist of a lot of speed cards, because fortunately in the old patch of the game, uh, the speed cards are actually quite powerful, and, and even just having the first couple of cards in your deck be speed cards, uh, you can actually be boosting your movement speed by, I guess if you were to get a stock at the beginning of the run, it can be like 30% or something crazy like that. So, uh, unfortunately, we did not get a stock yet, so I'm going to jump back. There's actually a trigger on the other side of this wall right here where you can end the level early. Uh, on solo, you just jump into it by yourself. If you're online, you can have your whole squad jump into it all at the same time and it'll end the level. But um, yeah, so we don't have a stock, but we do have plenty of movement speed cards that we're going to be stacking up. And then we're also going to be using a technique that we call, uh, I guess we used to call it stam hopping, right? Does that sound right, Maxi Loves? We, we called it a lot of different yeah, things. We, because... we called it stam hopping at the end because it was just like the best name for it because we didn't really want to confuse people by calling it bunny hopping because that's not really what it is. But... Right, right. And uh, and so really the way this works is you're kind of <clears throat> uh, holding down your sprint key on your keyboard and the, the frame after you release sprint, you're going to do a jump and there's enough inertia left over after releasing sprint that it allows you to jump without consuming stamina but at the same speed or about like it's probably like 99% of the speed that you were sprinting at beforehand and you can actually chain this because there's there's a weird there's a weird movement based thing where when you're landing from a jump if you time the jump properly it's a frame perfect jump you can actually do a second jump at the same speed without consuming any stamina either. <laughs> and so it's just, you can kind of like chain them together and, and just get multiple jumps without burning any stamina. So I'm a little rusty on the game since I haven't really run it too much prior to Elden Ring's release, but uh, I imagine by the end of the run, I'll be, uh, I'll be back to how I was when I was getting world records in this game. Probably not, but hopefully, hopefully uh, <laughs> improving all the while. Yeah, so one of the main reasons we actually down-patched the 1.0 is I think they uh, kind of patched, if not completely removed, stamp hopping, and um, obviously going fast is one of the most uh, essential things we want to keep in a speedrun, so this is why most, if not all, of the runners running this uh, down-patch to the 1.0 version. And there's sometimes where, like, if you're, if you're on a certain stretch where you have enough stamina, you don't always necessarily have to do stam hopping. Like in the particular case where you saw there, I was just pretty much running from uh, that gravel spot where we climbed over the trailer to the end of the level without doing very much stam hopping because I just had enough stamina to straight up sprint there. And uh, you know, you'll kind of see as as the run continues to go on that momentum is a relatively big part of the run. There's my first stock of the run. There we go. And we are going to lob a grenade over here so we can blow up that canteen or the container explosive thingy without having to uh, waste time shooting at it. Explosives are incredibly powerful in this game. You'll see that a lot more as we get into Act 2, Act 3, Act 4, really, really everything after this level 
you'll start to see grenades uh, start to, to pull ahead quite a bit. Which right now we're we're still at the very beginning of Act One, but there's a few missions in Act One where they pay off, but very heavily in Act Two, Three, and Four, uh, you'll see that grenades are just insanely broken. I'm gonna drop this minigun so that the NPC will uh, just start going ham on the zombies that are coming down this way. You going for the all or nothing skip? Uh, I haven't practiced it in a while, so I'll probably do the safe one. There's actually a line. I don't know why Coach is just chilling. I think I got the bad RNG where she's just like waiting ages. But you can jump off of that ledge right there. I haven't practiced it in so long, and it's kind of a YOLO hop. Unfortunately, if you don't make it, uh, it's pretty much rip on the level. So I'm going to opt in for a safer strat by jumping off the other side of the boat. But... Uh, Fall damage is a little finicky in this game. And I'm going to use this 60-second uh, window that we have to, to loot a little bit because uh, there is a lot of free money on this boat. And the cool thing about picking up money in solo mode is that when you finish the level, the bots give you all of the money that you pick up. And every time you pick up money, it gives that amount to all four players. So... If I'm picking up 25 copper, I'm actually picking up 100 copper because of the fact that the bots are going to give me my return on investment uh, shortly thereafter once we finish the level. So at this point, we're just hanging out. We're waiting for the boat to explode. Uh, Walker, I might be able to get some free heals. Nice. Nope. He, he <laughs> gave up on me. He scared. Come on, dude. There we go. Yeah, Walker is goaded in this game as a bot. He carries around a med kit and he has an infinite number of them. They're on a timer. I think it's I think it's three minutes. I don't know the exact amount, but I think it's three minutes. And uh, and it's just free heals. You don't have to like like he doesn't buy them. He literally just recharges them every few minutes. <laughs> All right, so that's the end of the first chapter, but we're still in Act One. So as you can see in like the bottom part of the screen. Uh, the game is kind of divided into multiple chapters and multiple acts. Uh, so we're going to be entering chapter two. And at this point, we're kind of hoping that by that this point in the run that we had upgraded our grenades a little bit more because we're coming up on the first boss of the run. But even without upgraded grenades, this boss is relatively easy. This is a live service game, so as a result, Turtle Rock has taken it upon themselves to see and notice things that might be a little bit under or over-tuned and correct them accordingly. And in evaluating this game upon launch, they felt that the Breaker, which is what we're about to fight, uh, was not quite as intimidating as they were hoping. And so they actually buffed him pretty considerably in, in the patches after this. Uh, but he is very, very easy to kill, especially on Recruit. Just two grenades at green quality already took him down a pretty good chunk. But what's really going to deal damage is when you're actually popping the pustules that are on his body. And he's going to go down very, very quickly as soon as one of these things bursts. I'm actually surprised none of them have bursted yet. There we go. I, it hits him for like 35% of his HP when you burst one of them. And sometimes the bots that are on the roof that we're like supposed to be saving, but we're not actually saving because we're just going to run away. Um, <laughs> they, uh, they sometimes can do really, really big damage. Yeah, I think with the breaker buffs, um, when Spicy and I ran it afterward, you'd lose anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds, honestly, because of the damage mitigation. Yeah, he got insanely tanky on the patch after this. Like a night and day difference. Yeah, this part's always a little bit scary because you do get um, incapacitated by any of the guys that, uh, any of the specials and any of the wall ridden. So Hayes is going to actually take the time to just shoot each everything off the walls, take a look where each ridden is. And yeah, and I think now is kind of a good time to talk a little bit about the different kinds of infected that are in this game, because uh, they actually do have quite a few different kinds, not just the, the regular zombies and, and the various, you know, different types, but also the fact that there's mutations as well 
um, that have different mechanics in and of themselves, even though the, the models look a little bit similar. You kind of have to have a, a keen eye to sort of notice the difference between the different kinds of infected, if uh, one of you would like to talk about some of them. Copy that. Um, so the big the big buff looking guys that I don't think we've seen one yet have we? No, we have seen one. Uh, the Reeker, he uh, he's just extremely tanky, takes a lot of damage, um, but he'll he'll ram you basically into into uh, other crowds of zombies or other special infected. He'll just push you around. He's a big bully. He's a big um, old meanie. And then there's also the tall boys, which you, you saw one wreaking havoc in the uh, the clinic there. Um, the tall boys have like this huge mutated arm that they bash and uh, attack with, and there's also variations of tall boys, like um, the one that can grab you instead of bashing you. That one, that one's really brutal. Yeah, the crusher, because like in solo, some of these special infected, they can you know they they grab you and you can't do anything about it unless you have a stun gun. Um, or Ev or Evangelo's ability, which he gets to use once every how many minutes? I don't remember. I think it's is it two? I'm pretty sure it's two minutes. I think it's but two. it's been so long that I honestly couldn't even tell you. Yeah. Uh, so like, if you get grabbed by a crusher, Evangelo does have an ability which makes it even better for the speed run, where like he can get out of that grab, but it does have a cooldown. Um, and there's there's the stingers. The stingers are. The Stingers are probably one of the more annoying uh, specials because they just are super fast and move all over the place sometimes, so it's kind of hard to predict what they're going to do. Um, they're super accurate too, like almost yeah. almost like like immersion breaking accurate. Oh my god, the copy <laughs> copypastas that were made. <laughs> I remember that one. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Stalker uh, is the one that can grab you, I believe. Um, yeah, that one sucks. Uh, and then there are... Um, I'm missing one. Which one am I missing? Uh, well, there's the Sleepers. The Sleepers, yeah, okay. So the Sleepers, you actually saw Hazeblade shoot a bunch of those off the wall. Um, and they, they essentially, they're just stuck on the wall, and if you run past them without killing them, they will grab, like, right there. Um, just a couple of sleepers, and uh, they'll grab you, and you'll be stuck, and you have to wait for the AI or use Evangelo's ability. So we had a little bit of a trick there that I just did. Um, so there's actually a way, if you have enough move speed... Oh, I, I fell off. Silly me. Um, if you have enough move speed, you can actually jump onto this railing without having to actually, like, progress through the apartment buildings because we have to open this door and save the survivors. Uh, unfortunately, I did not take the fall damage that I needed to. There's actually a cheese where you can get yourself incapacitated. I still am not taking enough damage. Uh, you can actually get incapacitated in this level after you save the survivors, and it'll still complete the mission, but unfortunately, I didn't take enough damage. The bots were just too good. <laughs> Aiden's just too good, honestly. The bots are, are actually, uh, in this patch, on Nightmare difficulty, they're actually pretty useful, but in the later patches, they made it to where the bots and the characters that you get are interchangeable. Like, the game just, like, chooses whoever you're going to get randomly. And as a result... Um... It, it kind of turned out that some of the different weapons that the bots use, the AI is kind of programmed to only use them. Like if they have a sniper rifle, for example. All right, this is DMCA, so I'm going to turn this off. <laughs> so we're going to be sitting here in silence for a few minutes. It's actually so funny because it's supposed to be a high intensive section, but, you know, everyone's just saying, ah, ah, as they're getting hit. Nice, you know. Reloading. Yeah, we just get to hear mom yell at zombies for the next five minutes. <laughs> oh man, yeah. So the devs, when they were when they were assembling the audio tracks for this game, I, I don't know that they were aware of it, and it took them a few patches to fix it. But they actually put the music track on the sound effects track for the jukebox, and so in order to do. 
this mission, they actually were telling all of the streamers to turn their audio off. And this has been fixed on the latest patch, but uh, unfortunately, since we're running on an older patch, which is the fastest version of the game, uh, we are still subject to the the burden of this meme. What actually plays on current patch when you when you have the DMC thing on? I actually don't know. <laughs> I haven't yeah, played the game I, I since then, tried. so I couldn't even tell you. But uh, I don't know if they just like turned the music off or if they actually like made different music for it. I'm I'm actually not sure. Yeah. Can you imagine if it was public domain songs like Jingle Bells? Or <laughs> it would be pretty funny. But this is definitely, there, there's a lot of points in this run where we're just going to kind of be sitting in one spot, just sort of holding down the fort. And uh, so lore-wise, what's happening is like we're just trying to contain a resurgence of infected that are like near our home base. And so there's a bunch of survivors that were kind of out and about that got stranded. And right now we're focused on trying to help the injured ones that have kind of taken shelter in that apartment building that we bunkered down in in the last mission. So uh, in order for the buses that are out there to extract those people, uh, we have gone into the bar and blasted the music as loud as possible. And, you know, obviously it's very loud. You guys, I can't even hear it. It's so loud. Um, but we've done that so that way they can get out and get back to our base. And we're almost done with this mission. And then we have uh, a couple of other missions coming up where we're going to be doing some holdout stuff too but uh this mission uh it took me a couple of days when i was when i was learning how to speed run this on nightmare difficulty it took me a little while to figure out uh how to route this mission because on nightmare on this patch uh getting hit at this point uh is going to hit you for anywhere from 20 to 30 hit points which uh, on Nightmare, I don't get 164 like I have right now, uh, which that's with a little bit of trauma damage. But uh, I don't get that much. I get 100, and then trauma damage ramps up a lot faster, too. So really, by this point, I probably only have about 70 HP total. So getting hit once for, for 20 to 30 damage is just really not ideal. But on Recruit, they hit for hardly anything so that we get to kind of chill on this but we ended up finding out that uh the the bots in this section if you just kind of like sit in one place they have infinite ammo they do a ton of damage and they headshot everything so if you just stay in one spot if you happen to have razor wire and stuff like that um th they just pretty much mow everything down and we actually got this this mission to be pretty consistent all things considered uh despite the fact that this game is almost entirely rng I'm going to turn my audio back on. Oops, not that one. Yeah, trauma damage really isn't uh, an issue for the recruit difficulties, but definitely for the higher difficulties. Um, so what it is, is if your HP goes below a certain threshold, uh, your max HP will actually decrease. So bandages and a lot of healing items will actually not be able to heal you back to full. So you uh, deal with a smaller health pool as you continue to sleep going. This is the major reset point in every yeah. <laughs> single like, category. There's like 12 <laughs> locations or something like that. It's it's actually pretty crazy how many here. spots that this uh, little box can spawn. In. Oh, you got some pretty good RNG there, actually. That, that actually was nice. pretty good RNG. You know yeah. what's actually crazy? I think it was after we stopped running the game, one of the runner current runners of this game just said, did you know that there are flashlights that point to where the location are and I think me and spicy were Dude, like what? it was insane <laughs> was I just like how did we not notice that yeah ever? it was it was weeks after this game had a pretty hard fall off from a speedrun standpoint just because of the fact that it was a live service game but uh when when everybody was running uh 1.0 yeah it was one of those things where just nobody knew nobody knew and then like the few of us that were still running it once we had it, we were saving a ton of time. I'm gonna go for a trick shot here where I kind of face this. I'm gonna throw one there. Nope, I messed up. There we go. And hopefully it blows up the doors. I don't think it did though. If I think you, get... you got one. Oh. Nope, I got neither. 
Oh, uh, feels bad. Fortunately, neither of them were locked. Those doors are almost always locked on nightmare difficulty. So if you don't do that trick shot and those doors end up being locked, uh, it ends up losing a lot of time because you have to drop the box um, if you want to use a grenade, which I think it's four night. Uh, you automatically equip a knife when you have the crates in your hands. I think it's four knife slashes, but it's faster to drop the box and go for the uh, go for the grenade throws. Cause it's just one grenade. Let's see if I proc any uh, any extra razor wire. Razor wire is another big uh, like highly advantageous item to have when you're running on nightmare as well, just because it slows everything down makes things take forever to get to you. Except for tall boys, because they don't suffer any movement speed penalty on razor wire. But they actually changed razor wire. It used to be, well, I should say in, in this build of the game, it still is um, in your offensive slot, but they actually, in the later patches, they moved it to where it's in your support slot. So uh, it kind of changed the way that you build your character a little bit because uh, when you upgrade your your items in the shop to better quality, so like I have blue quality grenades right now, in the current patch, that's gonna not upgrade your razor wire. So you're gonna have to upgrade that separately from your offensive weapon. So it ends up being a lot more expensive for that reason. Uh, but I'm gonna show you guys a, a fun little trick that was discovered also a long time after a lot of people stopped running this game. And it's that you can take this lovely minigun here Face it in the complete opposite direction of where it would otherwise be useful. Stand on this truck and uh, and, and grab onto it from here. And uh, you can also... Well, I, I guess this one doesn't work on, on Recruit, but on Nightmare you can actually... You can kill these guys. <laughs> and then they'll grieve your teammates then, when you guys play this online. And then they'll stop, they'll stop killing stuff, and eventually you can actually freeze all of the spawns so that way you don't get hit by any ranged attacks because hawkers, stingers, and stalkers can still jump at you from up here. But if you kill all of the bots that are up here as well as your teammates down there, provided that no stalkers, stingers, or hawkers are in play no more of them will spawn so you can just hang out up here until the timer's done we're literally just sitting here doing nothing for the next two and a half minutes like it's it's the most free thing in the history of gaming in terms of just getting through auto scroller sections don't even uh, have to hold w uh as a question uh and also as a catch up potentially because i know i saw this one in chat um i guess it was asked what is the card build that you're using so like, my oh god, yep. So yeah. So deck building is a huge part of speed runs, and uh, I haven't updated my decks in my Discord server really ever since I stopped running the game. But <clears throat> it's pretty much all speed cards. We typically go for Mad Dash and Run Like Hell at the very beginning because they give us the the biggest amount of move speed cumulatively. Mad Dash because when we're stand hopping, we get more distance and run like hell because more move speed means more inertia and momentum leading into our stam hop which also translates to more distance so those are the highest benefit and at that point we're basically looking at the cards that give us the most value on move speed for the longest amount of time so we have a 15 percent here then we have a 10 percent uh we have another 15 percent, but this one only lasts for 30 seconds at the very beginning of each level so we we knock that one a little bit later when you're doing multiplayer speed runs, which unfortunately this card does not give you move speed anymore in current patch, but when we were running this in multiplayer on 1.0, one person would always take this card at the very beginning, so that way everybody got a 15% move speed at the beginning. Uh, but then we have Speed Demons, since we're using an SMG, we get another 6% from that. We have the Cross Trainers, which give us another 3% move speed. I mean, pretty much everything in this deck uh, is either giving us Sprint speed, move speed, stamina, or some other way to like be, be able to progress through the level faster. So once we get into the late game, it's actually going to go a little bit less in favor of move speed and a little bit more in favor of doing a lot of damage because there's a lot of choke points in the levels where we are having to kill a boss before we can progress. So we're going to start shifting towards that a little bit later. But in Act 1... It's pretty much all move speed. The only required boss 
is the boss that we killed in the fifth mission. And that boss dies relatively fast. That uh, we try to just see if we can get the right luck to upgrade our weapons. But, or rather upgrade our grenades. Yeah, that's and actually a huge thing in this run is like the upgrade shop. It's, uh... It's, it's vital to get some of those upgrades if you really want to do the fastest strats, and uh, it's completely random what you get, so... Yep. You're pretty, much, you're pretty much forced to check the shop, like, every single time you finish a mission, you should probably check the shop just in case. Yeah, the only time it's really not worth checking the shop is if the shop is just, like, clear across where you're trying to go. I think the, the biggest one that comes to mind for me is the diner, uh, the mission that we did uh, yeah. two missions ago. Um, that mission, like the, it, it's like 10 seconds or something to go to the box. So it's just not worth it in that particular case. But, um, most of the time the shop is already like right here. Nice. We got purple nades. Um, and we got five of them. But by this point, like we are literally flying. That's, that's how crazy the movement gets once you're, once you're towards the end of every act is you just have so much move speed. That when you're jumping, you are quite literally flying. Or if you're Buzz Lightyear, I guess you would be falling with style. Another fun RNG section coming up here. Good RNG, boy. So you can actually snipe that one from a distance, but I haven't practiced that in probably four months. <laughs> so, so we're not going to do that, but... Yeah, you can always throw grenades. You're kind of waiting for these pustules to come back up. There was another one over there that's going to knock this bus down, and that's how we're going to uh, cross this bridge here to get through this level. Mind if I just talk about the co-op uh, kind of aspects of this run? Yeah, just sure. Really yeah, so co-op runs are a little bit different, obviously, because uh, Evangelo as a character is a little bit faster than everyone else, and everyone has to be in the safe room. There is usually a one person running to the end, while the other people are kind of utility players. What they're going to do is um, try to find the best guns, try to look at the shop, try to upgrade stuff, uh, and they're essentially the boss killers and having one runner. So that takes a little yeah. bit out of the shop RNG, though. When we did uh, two-player co-op a lot, it's like it, it's shown off a lot in Act 2 where one person will run to the end and the other person will check shop for nade upgrades and nade slots and weapons and stuff. And then uh, the utility player like on the boss levels will just absolutely shred the bosses with all the upgrades they've, they've acquired. Yeah, because I think the utility player doesn't level speed cards. They go with the team support cards and they actually end up getting a lot of damage-based cards, glass cannon, uh, obviously yes. having more grenades. Yep. Mm. It was actually kind of really funny. I would spicy would just run out try to get to the end i would look at shop and say oh there's a purple stock here i guess i'll give it to you next level and drop the gun for him but that was a lot of fun we're hoping that our bot friends take this ping so that i can start the lift so there's a thing where if you like spam the ping it doesn't guarantee but it increases the likelihood that the bots will come to your position and if they're not like in traversable territory then after a certain amount of time, they will teleport to your position. Oh, I guess I should do the, uh... Oh, yeah, I was gonna yeah, yeah, yeah. skip. The skip yeah. yeah, there's a little skip here where we can just save a bunch of time and hit that switch and jump over this thing before it's done. They also nerfed that. Yep, yeah, they finally put up a wall after, uh... Literally everybody was skipping that. I do think the pinging thing was an urban rumor that just was a placebo. I'm still, I'm indefinitely. Oh, I'm placebo gang on that, yeah. Some people like to leave parting gifts for the ridden or the over. I still do it. There's a. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, said, yeah. But I still did it when I was running too, but. So, we actually have some time to kill here. So, a lot of times, like, if you're low on resources on, on any difficulty, which typically it would be Nightmare. Um, you have like 40 seconds or something to, uh, to to scrounge around for whatever you can find because if you open this door too early, you'll actually soft block your game. You have to wait until it tells you to continue to the church. Otherwise, when you open up this door 
and uh, nail down all of these windows, it will not finish the level once you're done because it doesn't actually update the objective. So and there's also just... window, yeah, and there's also window RNG. Any three of these windows could be open, and obviously you want the windows closest to the pile. But sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. But this is actually relatively good window RNG. Right by the this is another pretty big reset point too when you're on world record pace because you pretty much need the the four windows in the back. You only have to do three windows, but you want all three of them to be those windows in the back. Otherwise, you can lose like 15 to 20 seconds in this area. So. If you're if you're on like insanely optimal pace, it's pretty much a reset if you don't get better than average window RNG. But everything in this in this game is RNG. And uh, for anybody that has ever seen a Resident Evil 3 classic speedrun, uh, this game puts RE3 to shame on how much RNG is in this game. If you have not reset at the previous 17 possible reset points, this one will definitely get you. <laughs> Gonna try to see if I can pop any of these nodes through the wall. I think it, I think I got a partial. I did. So that's good. Even if you get a partial, that's fine because the timer for the next node here to refill starts when the first one gets popped. There's a 17 second timer. So I didn't even have to wait on that. Um, okay. I threw that grenade point blank and it didn't blow up. Okay. This game is troll with grenades. Skill issue, honestly. Skill issue. Oh, no, not this spot, RNG. Yeah, this no, is this another is... major reset point because <laughs> if... You know what? It's actually it's usually Holly. Actually, it's usually Holly. Yeah. Yeah, Holly actually is. Uh, I have yelled at Holly so many times because it's almost always Holly. Like I, I think of all of my attempts that were on record pace that lost it right here. It's never not been Holly. <laughs> it's always Mom on the boat and Holly here. Yeah. And it's another thing if they're fighting enemies because I think. Some people throw a grenade just to be safe, but sometimes the bots just stand in place and, you know, don't go over the fence, which is extremely frustrating. Yeah. Oh. And a lot of times they'll try hopping the fence and they'll be like, nah, never mind. <laughs> and it'll be a constant back and forth between hopping the fence and going back in the house. So at this point we have so much stamina and so much stamina efficiency that like you'll notice in the like the bottom middle part of my screen where my stamina bar is like it's hardly moving at all even when I'm sprinting for extended periods of time because we've taken enough cards and I guess one other thing that I should mention is that the bots also have a deck of cards which we abuse the heck out of that on Nightmare because they take a lot of team damage cards and if we run a grenade build by the end of it if as long as one one of the bots has an RNG deck I think it's Holly. And as long as she takes the team damage card, uh, it's called Avenge the Fallen. And what it does is it gives you a stacking damage buff whenever a survivor gets incapacitated. Actually, I'm just gonna buy pipe bombs here. I don't think I'm really gonna need them anyway, but um, this is the last mission of Act 1, by the way. Uh, and then we'll be moving on to Act 2. Another big change compared to 1.0 and the current patches is that the positions of these howitzer shells are fixed on 1.0 and in the later patches they're all randomized. So they've, they've just continued to make things more and more and more random as this uh, as the the live service component of this game continues to be developed but this was like one of the few things that we could actually count on to not be super random at the end of act one I'm gonna get oh wow I thought I was gonna get knocked back there the but uh, they took care of business well there we go I remember twitch rivals we actually failed this mission didn't we we I don't let's we not did talk this about actually that. we were we were ahead by like minutes compared to the team that ended up winning it, which uh, I'm actually really good friends with that team. Um, but 
And like I was, I was playing with them a ton uh, after the event, but we were actually ahead of the team that ended up taking first place by I think like four or five minutes. And we ended up losing our entire lead on this mission. And then I think it was the second mission of act two, if I remember right, those were like our two big reset points. Yeah, we also, uh, we also, well, we died like three times, so. Yeah, we died a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I remember in one of the future missions, the mansion level, we set up for 10, 15 minutes too, because we were so worried about the difficulty. Oops. But I think uh, we determined later, you know, we could just run around the house, the laps. So now we're moving into Act 2, which, man, I don't know if Act 2 or Act 3 is the most toxic. Yeah, right. They're both pretty toxic in terms of just, like, how much time loss you can get on some bad RNG. But this first mission is the bane of everyone's existence that ever ran this game because in the first 30 seconds we are about to find out whether we lose a minute on this run <laughs> generally speaking we've actually had really bad stock luck i haven't seen it we had a green stock for most of the last yeah, there was one, I one green stock yeah is that a break? And you get a breaker? Amazing. Yeah, this is gonna be scary. Surely he gets the door. There's there. no Surely. way you don't. Get oh, I didn't a buy a toolkit. Well, oh, I didn't get the door anyway. But this door saves over a minute if you get it. And if you're if you're competing at all in this game, it's an automatic reset. There is zero percent chance to world record if you do not get that door. The, co the co-op aspect of this level for the utility player is actually really easy. You just wait till the runner gets to the door, and if he leaves the game, he didn't get the door, which is very fun. <laughs> yeah. And if he keeps running, you, then you find a way to uh, die, so you can just spawn in the end. This is like so, really, really bad RNG because we have a breaker as well. Uh, we didn't talk much about the breaker swarms, if somebody wants to cover that real quick. Yeah, I was about to mention how the Breaker actually has a mechanic where if you're outside of his, like, range, like his bubble, I guess, you can, like, very visibly see it. Um, the swarm will actually hurt you continuously. Uh, and f for whatever reason, like, they made that random. So right here, we didn't get the worst luck possible because we're not getting hurt by the Breaker Swarm, but... If we had gotten hurt by the Breaker Swarm, then, uh, yeah, uh, Haze would be in, like, the worst position possible for this level. It's actually kind of quick. I don't think we ever determined what caused it because they patched it out really quickly. Because I, I think, think some people said it's random. So, the, a lot of the labbing that I did on it was, was timing-based. And also whether or not you were in combat with the breaker. Like if you started shooting the breaker and engaging with it, that was one trigger. But if you just ran past them, and I think it was like, I think it's like five seconds or something. If you're, if you either spawn outside or if he spawns and you're already outside of it, or if you run out within about five minutes, uh, that's, that's the threshold where you won't take damage. But it, it does kind of seem random sometimes though, because where he spawns, can be random so you, there's no way to really predict what that's gonna look like and so you're kind of uh you're just kind of at the mercy of whatever hand the game decides to deal to you yeah the horizontal uh, levels it's actually not too bad because you could just technically run past it but on there are some little levels that are more vertically based because it's multiple floors and even let's say you're 80 percent ahead in the level but you're technically just above the breaker you could still just take damage from that and i think uh the labs actually is the best example labs oh no the labs i'm wishing that i hadn't yeah. bought that pouch because now i can't i can't cheese this whole section I've kind of just been buying random items throughout this run because I'm not as well rehearsed on like resupplying my stuff. But uh, generally you want a nice supply of grenades on this so that way you're not having to run around all over creation trying to pop these nodes. You can just kind of throw a grenade and be done with it. And there's some, 
optimal positioning that you can try to set up where like your your timing as soon as the node respawns you're already you know you've already got the next grenade airborne to pop the next one and you know when you're when you're going for world record obviously that stuff is is kind of important but so Hayes is actually leaving the main le uh, nest for less because uh, it spawns a key item, which is, I think, somebody's arm uh, that's used to progress to the end of the level. But you actually do run slower and you're a little bit more helpless. So that's why we uh, killed the mall nest uh, last, so that we only have to walk 20 feet to the end. Also, it's the most powerful weapon in the game. <laughs> no. -uh. It, well, from a melee standpoint, it is. It does more damage than any other melee weapon in the game. <laughs> it one-shots, like, everything. And if you're actually running a melee build, I'm pretty sure you can one-shot a tall boy with it. Well, it's always good to arm yourself. It's true. Uh, That's very true. <laughs> we'll be here for another hour, guys. Con uh, we're securing the armory, right? You know, the one with without any guns in it because lore reasons. This is not good. There's nothing left. Let's just say that the uh, the commander of our shelter is very not happy about the fact that there's no guns in this room right now. And he's going to express that dissatisfaction very clearly when we load into the next level. When you load into the next level, isn't there like M4s on the rook? There are. <laughs> so technically Holly's statement of there being a lot of rubble and no guns isn't entirely true. <laughs> there's a few, just you know, they're they're there's nothing on them. <laughs> there's no attachments or anything, but you know. Over two, this is hope one. What is your sit rep? Over. Oh man. It's another very toxic level. Act two is I don't know, I forgot how much of the Act 2 was, at least the beginning of it. I yeah. think Act 2 is the worst, wor way worse than 3, to be honest. Honestly, the worst part, in my opinion, of Act 3 is the battery and the keycard RNG. Yeah, yeah. the, ba the yeah. battery and the keycard are awful. Point, right? so. Yeah, pretty much. I think my least favorite level is the next one coming up, where you're just running through the swamplands with a bunch of buildings. Ugh. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the next level either. But it definitely picks up after that level and gets a lot more interesting because it's not just like... Like, pretty much after the next mission, it's not entirely just like running from point A to point B. There's a lot of like, oh, you have to kill this boss. You have to like complete this objective. When you actually get to pull off some like cool strats and stuff strats that are like either you get it or your run's dead <laughs> like the boat jump but from a completely uh, non speedrunning perspective I would totally recommend this game casually especially if you have uh, friends to play with and are looking for a very uh, competitive but friendly game to play because the higher difficulties of this game require actually a lot of teamwork to beat it's very fun it's exactly 34 seconds from the time you hit the switch. Or is it 34 or 37? I don't remember. It's 30 something. I used to know all the numbers because I would like look at my, I would look at live split on the exact moment that I hit it so I could time like when I needed to be there. It's like 30, it's 34 or 37. I don't remember. I also thought the ladders in this game were kind of weird, how you could actually just run at the ladder but not climb up. So Spicy would actually yell at me a lot. He'd be like, why aren't you climbing the ladder? I'd be like, I'm trying to. <laughs> Skill issue. Spicy's got, Spicy's got some spicy uh, spicy commentary on this game when he's running it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because the, yeah, the parkour... Clips. There's some clips. The parkour can clips. be pretty jank sometimes. The parkour is actually super fun in this game. There's a purple stock. Let's oh, go. Oh, purple stock. We're, now we're moving 15% faster. Just that one item gives us 15% move speed. So now, just like we were in Act 1, we are literally flying at this point. Look at this. I'm pretty sure the stocks also, uh, like 15% on, on a stock is more than 50% on our card. Uh, like the, the stocks multiply or something, they're, they're insane. There's a website called Staddy 
where you can like look up what the actual like values are for like everything. And I actually learned a lot about the speedrun in, in checking out that website because what I found is that when you're sprinting with any weapon, specifically sprinting, it, it, it's not like when you're just like, you know, strafing or jogging or whatever. Um, you always move at the same speed, actually. Like your sprint speed is fixed. But like it's still affected by like raw move speed and like move speed stocks and whatever, whatever cards you pick up. We can grenade that through the wall so we don't have to run in there. That'll save some time. But yeah, it's uh, it's pretty interesting that technically, since you, we do so much sprinting, if it's between like an Uzi or a shotgun with a purple stock, it, it's actually better to take the shotgun with the purple stock because of the fact that you'll benefit from sprint speed with it because you're not going to move any slower sprinting with the shotgun even though you will when you're just like jogging like we're sprinting probably 95 percent of the time in the run so like it, it's just all around better to have like if, if you have an option of getting a purple stock it's best to just take it mm. it's just something you get used to when you run the game you kind of just instinctively instinctively know what's best for you yeah, that's a that's a that's a good point. Yeah, like once you run the game a lot, you kind of just have a feel for like, okay, I need to have I need to have my grenades upgraded to this point by you know this mission, um, and if not, we're gonna be in trouble. And then kind of the same thing with like managing your weapons. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of RNG. I mean, the uh, color system is based on loot you know green being uncommon purple being epic but some runs you have what seven epic grenades some runs you have four uncommon grenades that's just how it goes i did i did nightmare with a few people we did like a no card nightmare challenge and around that time i don't remember if it was during the no card nightmare run or if it was like one of the like just messing around runs that we did leading up to it but there was a point in time when we had like 14 grenades each because like we were just buying upgrades in the shop and <laughs> we had so many. Yeah, your equipment this run's not looking too bad or in this act rather. Purple stock, the, the blue nids looking pretty good. Yeah, I think ideally as long as we get uh, purple nades, the, the boss fights at the end of the run should go down pretty quick. World record pays Paul. Oh no, this isn't anywhere near record. <laughs> yeah, recruit ended up being very optimized, I think, to the point where RNG did make or break a run, which did kind of suck, but at the same time it was kind of neat how optimized it ended up being. Yeah, the, the individual acts were definitely way more popular than doing all acts, but all acts is so much more fun to watch. All right, so I think this run's been going pretty well so far. You guys think we should YOLO the boat jump? You do have purple stock, so that is true. You literally, you literally need purple stock, I believe, to do it. Yeah, yeah. I think you have to be at like 170 percent move speed or something like that, which is really, really hard to do. You also need stamina, so I'm gonna try to conserve some of that on the way over so it, this this jump only saves like 10 seconds but it looks so cool nope i didn't get it uh, no. i didn't get it unfortunately skill issue yeah so uh water really hurts in this game nobody if knows how like, to swim in this game <laughs> yeah if it's like <laughs> if it's like five feet deep you did feels bad but, so when you um, do that jump you actually come out instead of running like all the way around this area here you actually come out right on the other side of these crates and i think maxi timed it a while back it's like 10 or 12 seconds or something that you save yeah it was i think it was 12 but if you don't do it and you have purple stock i think it's 10. that sounds about right Unless like, you yeah, like purple stock, you should probably do it anyways. Unless you like brute force a purple stock, generally speaking, 
you're going to be losing quite a bit of time, especially, you know, when you're at that like record level where it's just like reset after reset, especially in this act. If you don't get that door, like this is another one of those scenarios where like you can just be resetting for hours to just like not getting that door in the first mission. Yeah. And like when you so when whatever character you're playing as dies, you switch to one of like the bot characters. So he's got Walker and you can clearly see the massive difference between Walker's speed and Evangelo's speed right there. Like Walker was just so slow. Yeah, you play with the bots deck, yeah. And the bots always go for, like, really team-based, basic cards. Which, when you have to play as them, is terrible. But this act on Nightmare, it's actually, like, so broken. Because every single one of the bots has Avenge the Fallen. So that stacking damage card that I was talking about earlier... Um, we can we can abuse it. I think I think uh, spicy and Camille. I think you guys were there when we were labbing that because I was I was like DMing you guys. I was like you guys need to get in here and, and lab this thing with me. And we ended up one shotting an ogre on nightmare with oh yeah this was this the stream strat. where we yeah where we downed <laughs> each other in a set progression and then yeah yeah really yeah it's oh, yeah. crazy it doesn't work on this difficulty because there's no friendly fire but it works on on veteran and nightmare and basically in this next mission that we're going to be doing actually you do it on this mission too because um the breaker can kind of make or break this level make or break right no pun intended pun absolutely intended actually but um you down the bots after you drop the second, or after you lift up the second crate. Uh, you down the bots and you just throw a grenade at the breaker and he just instantly falls over. Which, with blue grenades, sometimes it takes two, but if you have purple grenades with this deck, it's it's usually a one-shot. Well, not this deck. My, my Nightmare deck is very slightly revised, so I take an extra damage card. I don't think I have... Well, I do have Bomb Squad. That gives me 100% explosive damage. If I remember right on Nightmare... On Nightmare, I believe I remember uh, taking one extra card. In Watch out. Yeah. In perspective, the, uh... yeah, the utility <laughs> player in a co-op will actually um, either one or... Oh! Oh! Oh. You're giving me a heart attack, dude. This is rough, dude. <laughs> no, not Walker. But yeah, anyway, the utility player, um, by this time, usually one shots or two shots a breaker or any other boss. Thanks, kid. Because he's been upgrading and has just a damage for us. We gotta get out of here. <laughs> we gotta go. That was so scary. You're just, like, looking at the breaker, <laughs> staring at him in the face, right next to the edge. Yeah, that was, uh... That was a little scary. <laughs> Which reminds me, uh, fun fact, the breaker sometimes on that one, that one, like, cargo location that Hayes was just at, sometimes the breaker gets confused and tries to jump on you, but, like, your positioning is kind of off, and he ends up jumping off the boat entirely. Yeah, he just, he just yeets himself out of the game. <laughs> It's I was kind of hoping that might happen, but yeah, it's it's hilarious when it happens. Like it, it's just the most satisfying thing ever. Just like watching him jump and then just despawn. <laughs> so this is the level where things start to get very interesting. Oh, I am using my nightmare deck actually because I have event. I, I took Avenge the Fallen. We have purple nades now, so this should be. This should be nice and interesting. He's a, Hayes is a little bit better than us uh, recruit runners. I'm using my Nightmare deck. Um, I actually used to have a separate deck specifically for this difficulty. Alright, that was still pretty good damage. My damage is a little low because Avenge the Fallen is is something I only really use on Nightmare. 
and veteran. It's kind of a useless card on recruit, but I'm just rolling with whatever decks I was using like four months ago when I was running this game. This is kind of sort of a D rust run for me a little bit. I haven't played the game too much. I've been I've been obsessed with Elden Ring, as I'm sure everybody has uh, over the last. What's that game? You haven't heard? <laughs> yeah. What's that? Indie game? <laughs> well, yeah, I don't play indie games, so. Oh, Never I got you. Doctor <laughs> Rogers is our best hope. All right, we got five nades. We should be gaming on this level. This is very similar to the previous level we did. But instead of one boss, there's two. Yeah, we call these uh, this the previous level, this and the next level, just the boss rush chapters. Cause uh, even the speedrun casually, you have to fight pretty much all the bosses uh, in multiple versions of them. Oh man, he's trolling. That's a very good toss. Dude, where is he going? Actually, spicy. Do you recall when the poker was just jumping back and forth on the lawn? Yeah. Whenever, whenever he spawns in that corner, he spawned here, he just griefs so hard. Oh my gosh, this is terrible. This level casually on Nightmare is extremely hard, but it's very fun to play. I'm going all in on the minigun. I'm sick of it. <laughs> Man, if only there was a grenade you didn't yeah, miss. Yeah, the ogres... The ogres just like 180 dodge like half of your grenade throws in the speed run. It can get really frustrating when you're on like record pace because the previous mission, this mission, and the next mission, there's a combined total of five bosses. So we're, we've got three down, we still got two to go, and two of those bosses are ogres. And what they do sometimes is you'll throw a grenade and they'll immediately, like, instantly turn around 180 and walk the other way. And because they're so large that their their movement speed naturally kind of follows their size, um, like, they, in, in not even half a pace, they can be way out of the range of your grenade throw. If we're gonna do it, yeah, they're, they're surprisingly agile for how big they are. Let you in. Sorry, breaks. This is a super fun level on uh, when co op runs. Just like. So I don't think we've actually seen a snitch yet, right? There was one um, like halfway through Act 1 that was like right by the safe house door after grabbing the supply crate. Right, group. yeah. So these are the snitches. They're technically just. They're basically just alarms. <laughs> they're living as the alarms. Name would, as the name would suggest. Yeah. So there's five of them here, and you have to kill all five in order to spawn the uh, the two breakers. And just, like, there is no cap. Like, there's no cap to how many spawns, so killing all of these snitches does lead to quite a lot of special infected. Um... But fortunately, the haze has so much damage built up with the with the grenades that the breakers won't be won't be difficult at all. Be nice and quick. Yeah, we've got three three each ready to go. So the level is a giant circle, and I think there are at least six seven points where different areas where the breaker can spawn. So obviously, you have to run around the ring, uh, look for the breakers, but. Actually, it looks like the second breaker came. It shouldn't be too bad. There was, the a, level ends there was a, a grenade right here. I'm going to just take that and try to... There nice. we go. That's Act 2 in the bag. We got two acts left, but the last act is just one mission. <laughs> so... But you weren't just in the neighborhood. And Act 3 is about the same length as Act 2. Roughly. Depending on RNG. <laughs> There's always RNG when it comes to this run. What's everybody's also, favorite? Uh, uh, go ahead, Maxi. Like, if, if anyone's curious, 
every single time you go back to Fort Hope, like you have to start with your deck again. So like you have to pick different decks for different acts. And I think Hayes kind of le like leans back on the speed cards for Act Two, but Act Three, I think you go back into speed, don't you? Uh, mostly yes. Um, for Nightmare and and these, as I'm realizing as I'm picking up cards here are nightmare cards, but um, yeah, generally speaking you do go back towards speed because the first half of Act 3 is almost entirely movement based. So we're going to be attempting to try to uh, capitalize on that scenario, but uh, we do have several bosses that we have to deal with in the second half of Act 3, so we do take some damage cards to try to offset that in the later part of Act 3. You should have just ran at the Hawker. He might have been... You never know. He might have missed. There's some crazy juke strats for Hawkers, but I'm, uh, I'm not as well rehearsed on them as I used to be. We gotta wait until the later parts of Act 3 before we end up with a lot of stamina, so even though we have a lot of move speed right now, um, a lot of the bots, uh, as Max had mentioned earlier, it's a lot of like team-based cards, and one of the like relatively early ones that they take, uh, like I'm pretty sure it's like either all at once or it's like three missions back-to-back -back where one of them takes it, uh, they're 10% stamina for the team, so I'm only sitting at like five bars of stamina right now, but once we get going, I'll probably have like, I don't know, 10 or 12 or something like that by the time we're getting into the later part of this act. What were you going to ask earlier? What is your favorite? I was just going to ask what everybody's favorite character is. Not just because oh, Evangelo. Evangelo's He's fast. Yeah, that's why. That's why for you. <laughs> I was the runner who we played. So. I like Mom a I, lot. I think her dialogue is just way too funny. I like the uh, expansion player that doesn't appear in the speedrun actually, but the co-op, the usage speech, usage speed girl, Carly. I think her name was Carly. Continuing to escalate their attacks. Yeah, Carly. She was using. She was using the in the run in the co in the co-op. Well, no, in the co-op run, not in the. Solo yeah, that's that's Carly. Yeah. I like I like Jim. Jimmy boy. Jim also does mad damage. Oh my gosh, yeah. Jim is so good in casual play with a sniper build. I think you one shot every special run. If you have a if you have a Barret with a lot of weak point damage between like your weapon attachments and your cards, and then you get his like stacking uh, weak point damage. I think it stacks up to, I think it's 10 precision kills. I think it gives you an additional like 25% weak point damage or something. Maybe it's different now on current patch, but uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, it, 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 I'm pretty up. sure that used to be the meta for like Nightmare. This one person would go gym build. Yeah, I do, li I do like my guy, Jimmy. Ugh, gym players. So Gym that pickers. trick shot there was a grenade toss through the fence from this side. So we can start the timer for the node spawns, just like we did in Act 1. We can start that timer while we're working our way across. So that way, by the time we get over here, they're already starting to spawn again. And now we are already on our way to finish up the level. We got a lot of, pool. We got a lot of dock mains in chat. <laughs> That swimming pool was so bad on the higher difficulties, because in the higher difficulties you have to wait for more bulbs, but oh man, you would have to loop the zombies in the, in the swimming pool, it got really good. A lot of Doc fans, huh? At Twitch yeah. Rivals, I played Doc. I played Doc at Twitch yeah, Rivals. Did. I was so bad too. <laughs> I felt like I played like garbage. Well, none of us had done a veteran <laughs> run yet. So, like, we were, we were basically doing, uh, like... Ready? A, f a first speed run playthrough of veteran. I was at work when I got a Discord notification on my phone saying, "Hey, you want to play Twitch Rivals?" I told yeah. my boss, "Hey, I gotta leave early." I think <laughs> I, I think I was routing. Uh, 
two missions after this on Nightmare when Maxi came in and he's like, dude, dude, I need you. Come here. <laughs> I'm like, what? He's like, dude, Team Maxi Lobes. Let's go, dude. I'm like, dude, I got, I got GDQ hotfix tonight, man. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like... I feel like we did really re well for like the circumstances, but boy, was that chaos! It was that that whole night. That was such a late night for me because that that started at I think it was like what four o'clock or something. Well, for you it was like one o'clock, I think. Yeah, um, it was like one o'clock for me. And it, yeah, it started at like four, but it was like two or three hours long, and then and then GDQ Hotfix was later that night. And yeah, oh my gosh, best battery RNG. Let's go! Whoa. It, like <laughs> cheating. that's <laughs> that is your literally best is RNG on battery. You have your cheat engine open. No, nope. quarter. Mm, no, nope. mm, mm, take it. The game felt horrible for giving you the terrible RNG at the start of Act Two. Why can't I? Climb? What are you there climbing, dude? I don't hey, know. What are you climbing? Spicy, dude? tell me what I'm climbing, dude. What am I climbing? <laughs> And then, oh and my in, uh, god, Mazar. And then Dying Light, it's what are you not climbing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Man, the it's actually crazy to think about how different the parkour is in this game versus Dying Light. I think both of them are, are fun in their own way, but they're just so different from each other. I'm ready! Yeah, that and was Dying Light 2 was a very fun speed run for the runner, I think, where because you have to do a lot of parkour. I do think for the viewer, it's you know just technically just movement based, so it's kind of like Mirror's Edge, you know, where it's technically skilled for the runner, but for the viewer, it just looks like you're doing the same thing over and over again. I could have thrown that grenade from ground level and saved a couple seconds, but the strategy with this particular level is to kind of use these walkways as a choke point and to more or less let the bots do the work. Again, since we're on Recruit, it's not a huge deal, but on Nightmare, this this is like the reason. Well, okay, it's not the reset point because these, really, this mission and the next mission are both really bad. But, yeah, the uh, reason why this mission can be really bad is this section right here, the maze. Yeah, we're about to find uh, out what kind of RNG we got. Yeah, randomized pathing leading to the end, and there's non-stop, like, hordes and special infected here. Huge, huge, huge shout-outs to our good buddy, Trey D, for taking, like, three days. Spicy, you helped with it, too. But uh, yeah, I think Trey I probably like spent more glitch. time than anybody, like, actually mapping out all of the different combinations to where we could actually memorize the different combos. And Trey built like this like very comprehensive map. <laughs> yeah, the way that that map was actually made is like someone pretty early on posted that you can jump into a corner and like land on nothing sometimes in the maze. So I was like, I wonder what happens if I just set a jump macro to jump every one millisecond. And uh, yeah, you could just jump into the sky like on nothing, and he used that to be able to map out all the, the mids. That, that well, bird's eye cool. view. Yeah. Yeah. So hey, do you want to get world record? You also have to memorize the four different possible maze layouts, an actual maze layout. I see something. You also have to memorize where all these boxes are. <laughs> oh, well, I don't think boxes was I think pretty easy, right? Like. Even though there was RNG, because it was easy till it wasn't. It's easy yeah. on recruit, but on nightmare you have to do twelve of these by yourself. They nerfed it in later patches where on solo you only have to do six. Um, but obviously, like the the newer patches just really aren't super viable for speed runs. But um, that it's it's one of the biggest reasons why like nobody ran nightmare act three is because doing twelve of these crates when everything's hitting you in Act 3, two hits and you're dead. Like, I mean, it's that fast. Uh, there's one crate right there. You can see it through the window. You can actually kind of peek some locations. There's another crate right there. Yeah, you could check six locations. Four on the first floor, two in the basement, I believe. We can check. Yep, we can check up here. Oh, well, there's no, no crate in that room, but there's a... 
a card that you can buy. Oh, I forgot to mention, there's, there's cards out in the wild uh, that you can find. Some of them are free and others you have to buy. Also, you can use a grenade to just light up the basement like a Christmas tree. I didn't know that. Sorry. I, I didn't see anything down there, but I'm going to grab the... I grabbed the two free ones. Yeah. And we are loading these crates up on the truck and getting the heck out of here. I don't remember how many locations there are. Um, but there's probably like, like there's probably like 20. Yeah, I was, was going to say 16 to 20. I think it's 20 or 24 or somewhere in that range. Yeah, there's, there's a lot. <laughs> right, I'm going to check up here because... I'm thinking one's going to be in the bathroom. You can kind of peek some of these rooms to see if they might be inside, but they're not always super easy to peek. There's also a strat. If you're on co-op meatball, you got to be careful. <laughs> There's also a strat where you can like... Oh, I fell off. If you like, If you like walk forward while you're approaching the edge, you'll like throw the crate off instead of just like setting it on the floor. See, Spicy, he messed that up too. It's not as easy as it looks, but brother. There's another one. So there, there's five. All right, I'm being trolled right now by just jumping off the ledge. That's cool. It's fine. We only need one more after this anyway. Wait, where was that other one? Oh, this uh, is so left. There, there it is. There you go. Yeah. This is actually so fun casually because uh, obviously as speedrunners, we kind of know where every possible box could be. But uh, when you play this casually, you just, it's so funny how people are just scrambling to look for orange boxes. We also have a move speed boost that comes from using pills right now that I picked up as my card for this mission so I can pop pills to move faster for a short period of time. This is the last crate, so we'll be able to finish this level right here. Very nice. Yeah, this mission is very, very, very hard on Nightmare. Even veteran, like in, in the early days of this game, it took quite a bit of planning to like figure out how you were gonna like approach holding off everything all the while. And I think a lot of people opted, you, you either did one of two things. You either tried to brute force it speedrun style, or it was like, okay, we've got to take down this ogre and then just try to like manage the horde while one or two people just start running around trying to get boxes. But that was definitely one of the more chaotic missions when this game was new, trying to just like figure out what to do, where to go, who's doing what. The uh, lab the breaker. breaker. The lab breaker. He jumped real far though, so this actually is good. Hayes, I'm gonna let you know from traumatic PTSD experience, you're gonna die. Nah. It's not taking damage. No. Hayes, I'm gonna let card? you know. Now let's do this. Yeah, this this is was a our. I think this was. Mission. I think this was our at least my biggest run killer. I absolutely hated the breaker spawning here. Where is the key card? Oh, he might have been in, the, like, have been room, in that room. Yeah, room. the body. Yeah, yeah. There he it's is. It's really easy to there miss. There it is. Yeah. I do think, though, the bodies don't sometimes spawn. I want to point that out. I think we might have been blind. I think a skill issue for sure. <laughs> I, I, I hope that breaker just eats you alive. I'm sure they'll be a cop. I actually just figured out that you can jump over that bush. <laughs> Never knew you could just fly across that bush. I used to go around the stairs. This line's well, kind to be, of... Well, to be fair, the barbed wire hurts you, so you probably used to go around the stairs because of that. Yeah, that's true. I didn't know you could even climb that. I thought you'd have to go around the school. That's what I thought too. I I, I just assume barbed wire equals not traversable, because like the, like a lot of the fences that have barbed wire on them, you can't climb them. So I just figured that, like I didn't even think about it. Well, 
I guess that's like a one second time save that I just found. <laughs> well, I'm sure I'm sure a lot of people have found it that keep that still run the game. Steve probably found that a long time ago, but I just figured it out for myself just now. Making the grade. We're going back to school. I know it's like almost summertime, but we're going back to school. All right. This is another level that is pretty difficult on higher difficulties. We had a fun. Most of this act. We had a fun meme time, right? Where we'd send one. I think when we played, we send one person one at a time because you know you yeah, just have to I kill the bulls. That. That's pretty fun. Because this level is relatively straightforward, and uh, when the enemies do spawn, you can't really loop them. What we used to do, as kind of a joke, we would just send one person in at a time. The others would just stay in the safe room. And one person would just try to break all the bulbs and deal with all the enemies as best as they could. Yeah, that was a that was a pretty early speedrun strat we adopted because the the way the the horde works in this game is they only spawn and pursue the player that has progressed the furthest into the level. And so, if you just send one person in that can move really fast, then they just take the horde and then like you'll get you know the stragglers and whatnot that will aggro on the rest of the group but for the most part the horde will actually despawn because there's just not anywhere for them to go because the the person that's like leading the pack is running so far away from them that it's just like a waste of system resources to keep them in the game so the the game director just removes them all right, so the battery's on this side because the light dinged over there. This was another big one. Then we realized the light on the door like shows where the battery's up. I'm gonna try to save these pills. I do think this small skip coming up here was pretty revolutionary to how um, you could actually escape out of the bleachers before they actually are done setting up. Here we go. Pills and fly. Oh my god, my favorite dialogue is coming up right here when they get on the bus. There. Nice. Oh, boy, Walker is flying right there. <laughs> they get on the bus only to crash it five, less than five seconds later. It's, I, I, I would laugh every time this cuts in the I don't remember how to do the jump on this fence. <laughs> I know you gotta like stand on the rock. I don't remember if you just like regular jump or sprint jump. I don't remember. It's oh, did that end up actually being meta for speed? No, it's actually super slow. I'm not gonna do it because I don't remember it's... what it changed. Well, it was good on Nightmare because there was no special spawns. Uh -huh. Hey, look, a stock. What do you know? Finally. Finally. Everyone, all right. Yeah, like, the stocks became, like, such a meme for the more optimized categories that, um, the community actually came together and made a stockless category just for people who don't want to deal with that uh, insane amount of luck that is already, uh, just sitting on top of a pile of luck, so. Compound RNG. <laughs> don't you know, Maxi, luck is a skill. <laughs> Let's see if we get good RNG on these capsules. Good That's good RNG the right there. That's great RNG. Right oh wow! There. Okay. Yeah. See, he's practice, so he got good yeah, RNG. Yeah, he got good RNG. Not so good RNG. It never fails. Though. I think go. in any, I think in any speed game, when your, uh, when your splits are green, you get the worst RNG in the later half of the game, and then when you do a node reset run where you're 30 seconds behind, you get the best RNG. I think everyone's gone through that before. I'm 
trying to zigzag a little there because I don't want that stalker grabbing me. Why would people do this? Hello. <laughs> oh yeah, so that's the hag. I don't think I've ever seen the hag come through there. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of rare, actually. She's aggro to you, right? I think. I think. I think so, yeah. Which, that's not going to be good. I actually am kind of scared to kill these. Uh, no, she's not on me. Just, just take anyone that's not me. Oh, she got Walker. Walker, yeah. <laughs> oh. Get him, dude. <laughs> so casually, the um, witch is a one-hit kill. You have about 10, 15 seconds to kill her as she's eating one of your teammates. Otherwise, that teammate's in her belly and gone forever if she decides to burrow out. Road. You can use a stun gun or the breakout skill that Evangelo has to escape it, but... Um, most people don't run breakout unless they're using it as a burn card uh just because it's it's not super useful because it depends on moves or uh, on use speed and evangelo part of what makes it so good is the fact that not only is it just like included with his stuff but he gets to use it instantly it's not affected by use speed at all so but if you're just like taking it as like a regular card unfortunately that kind of makes it a lot less viable so we're grabbing these t5 grenades because they are useful for dealing with ogres And we gotta go real fast because otherwise we're gonna get two ogres instead of one. Yeah, so this was like a really early skip that was found. Um, I found this. There's actually two ogres that spawn here, but if you're super fast, the second one won't spawn. Or alternatively, if you want to be super safe about it, you can kill that first ogre um, after you destroy all the nests. That also works. I swapped back to my grenades on accident. I didn't intend to do that because you want T5s here so that you can, you can like bake these nodes, not the little ones, but the main ones. You can bake them in the T5 grenades after like five seconds or something and then they'll actually just get destroyed like as you're running away so that one's actually going to pop while we're over here so you saw it kind of went over to two out of three and then basically you're just kind of waiting for it to swell up and then it'll do its thing and then an ogre is going to pop up here in a second. We're going to throw another T5 at him. And he'll go down pretty quick. There we go. Walker! I'll save you! No, don't do it! Oh. <laughs> Doesn't matter anyways. Once once the ogre dies, it's like a 13 or 11 second timer or something like that before the thing ends. Um, and then at that point, that's, uh, that's GG on Act 3. And then now we're coming up on Act 4, which is just one mission. And it's probably one of the shortest missions in the entire game. And it's one of the very rare situations where it's actually a faster run on the harder difficulty. Um, and it, I, I keep going into online and like, obviously there's no servers <laughs> for this patch. I do think the uh, abomination boss design and boss fight is very, very cool and very well uh, made to be honest. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. Time to change? Yeah, this this run is only, or this act is only 
about two minutes long. And... As I mentioned earlier, it's a situation where... Heading into the tunnels. Let's see if we can stop this thing. What is it? It's this one, right? Yeah. We're gonna just go boom, and that's fine. Rogers is dead. So that just leaves us to save the day. And uh, the reason that it's faster on Nightmare instead of on this difficulty is because of the fact that for some crazy reason, the animations on these tentacles are substantially faster. On Nightmare compared to Recruit. And as a result, you progress through this phase quite a bit faster. I'm not getting the best of RNG here on these tentacles, but I'm gonna try to do what we can. Wow, this this thing just doesn't want to go down. There we go. Oh, I'm going down too. Might need to retry this one. No, Walker, come back. <laughs> Where's mom? Where's mom? Mom, come here. Wake up. Mom is sleeping, oh dad. Mom is sleeping. Oh, oh no, she has her ear pods in. <laughs> ear pods so in. So despite the us. fact. So despite the fact, I'm going to go ahead and just retry the mission. Um, despite the fact that this is one of the shortest missions, it's also one of the most random because of the fact that when you start killing the tentacles, arguably like the largest sizes of hordes in the game just start showing up. And when it happens, it is just absolutely brutal if you get like certain combinations that just completely block the AI from being able to do anything. I'll probably go for an LMG this time around because the sniper rifle was uh, so not yielding the results that I'm looking for. Uh, actually, I found out when I was grinding world record for this on Nightmare that the shotgun is... The, uh, the AA-12 is actually really, really strong for this mission if you get up close to the second phase of the fight. I think I could have told you that the 12-gauge shotgun that's automatic would be a very good weapon against the boss that's big. You see that juke? It was nice. Also, there's a glitch where you can drop and pick up the weapon and it reloads it to full ammo. Especially useful for LMGs because the reload times are atrocious. Walker, I really need you to get out of the way, buddy. <laughs> hey, he'll do this. Gosh, I'm taking so much damage here. I'm just going to use my grenades. I need to make this fight crazy fast and co-op runs you pretty much just need every phase and it is it's insane how fast you can get it to be oh my goodness this is so troll do you need team maxi lobes to hop on for you <laughs> <laughs> where's my team yeah Let's these bots are sleeping I have the exact same reaction in all my multiplayer games. Where's my team? Alright, well, I've only got one grenade, so I'm gonna have to make it count. Hey, look, a grenade! <laughs> nice. Get I do think yeah. you need to shoot the mouth one or two times, both sides. That's so you don't phase.
Yeah, we're just gonna try to do this phase normally. Where is Walker, dude? What are you doing, <laughs> Chief? You know what? This is actually good because I'm gonna get a damage bonus when he goes down. And we're about to get the mouth right here. Well, I guess that didn't really do that much, but it's cool. It takes like hundreds of attempts to get the best RNG on this level. So I, I, I will admit that I did misspeak a little bit on saying that this is like the fastest level in the game. It's the fastest level in the game when you get best RNG. It's like a minute and 12 seconds or something. It's, it's a 112 run. When uh, when you get best RNG on Nightmare on Recruit, it's a bit slower because of the animation times and such. All right, this should phase right here as soon as he opens up. There we go. Let me replen my ammo real quick. So casually, this is the last fight of the Abomination. You do have five minutes to kill him before, I guess, in the story he goes to the open world and everyone dies. And he has different weak spots all over his bodies that are visible at different times, so... Hayes is gonna try to get in a good position to clear most of them. I don't think Holly's gonna take the bait. Oh, she did take it, nice. Wow, I didn't get anywhere near the damage that I needed on that. All right, I'm going to go around and I'm going to try to finish the fight. He's almost dead. This is like a super risky spot to be jumping around because if that tail clips me at all in the hitbox, I'm instantly dead. I think there's still one over here I can grab, right? Yeah, it's up here. I'm going to go through the tunnel that's over here, though. There's not really... Yeah. The thing about not getting this in the quick kill, and this is why, like, if you're just grinding Act 4, you're going to reset really uh, really often. Is not getting the quick kill is like a minute and something slower because you have to you have to try to pop these things individually. And the build that we go with doesn't allow you to aim down your sights. So you're kind of just trying to train your sights down as it's aiming which is incredibly hard to do with a weapon that has, like, the worst accuracy out of all the other weapons in the game. He's right here, yeah, though. I think there are two weak spots up top, two weak spots on the underside. Yeah, and the hitbox on these is just, like, really, yeah, really mean. All right, time is coming there. up as soon as this health bar reaches zero. Time. GG's, brother. I still have to live until the cutscene, but that's technically time. All right, we got it. <laughs> that was a bit of a troll act for, but it's all good. Now, in general, like, there was a lot of bad luck in that run, and it was yeah, all that handled was, pretty well, so. Yeah, that was an insanely unlucky run. It's The nice thing about it on Recruit, though, is that there's, there's very, very few instances where if you're just trying to finish the game where it's just like impossible to finish the run. Uh, a nightmare that happens a lot because like, you know, all it takes is just, you know, one death and then losing your continue, retrying, and then one more stroke of bad luck. But fortunately on Recruit, that doesn't happen very often, if ever, uh, just because of just the damage values being a lot lower and such. But yes, that was Back for Blood. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching um maxi lobe spicy avukamu thank you guys so much for uh for hyping up the chat and uh and keeping the the commentary flowing um if you guys are interested in checking out any of my content you guys can find me at twitch.tv slash hazeblade and uh i stream usually six seven days a week uh, i do it full time i support my fiance and my two kids doing it so i uh, hope to see you guys over there soon and uh yeah Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Perfect. Yeah, it was great having you on. Thank you for doing Back for Blood. And once again, uh, you post the link in chat. If anyone does want to check out Hayes Blade, absolutely great runner. Uh, just a lot of fun games. 
So thank you again, Hazeblade, and uh, Spicy, Avu, and Maxi for commentary. Yes, sir. No yeah. problem. Thanks for having us. All Thank right. Uh, with Back for Blood done, uh, we do have a special surprise. Uh, a bit of a last-minute swap. Uh, so don't go anywhere. We'll have more games coming on tonight. And I will uh, tell you more about that once we are back from the break. We're going to take a quick be right back. It's time to stretch your legs, touch your toes, to uh, avoid blood clots because... We're just going to take a quick wellness break. Uh, before we do that, though, I just want to point out that Games Done Quick Highlights is a channel that features highlights of our GDQ Hotfix shows. Use the exclamation mark highlights command to learn more about these highlights. We'll be right back. All right, we are back from the break. Welcome back, everyone, uh, to Speedruns from the Crypt. Uh, so we're back from the break here. Oh, you know, back from blood, back in the break. But our next games are going to be a little bit weird um last minute uh our runner unfortunately did get a little bit sick um y you know it, these things do happen and we're very understanding here i always like to make sure that if anyone does come on the show that they're fully able to um you know do the run it's kind of an exciting thing people get to show up their favorite speed runs and stuff like that so resident Evil village will be on it in two weeks on the next show that we do uh cat link will be back for that uh, i'm definitely wishing her to be um you know nice and healthy hopefully she'll be fine but i will tell you right now she will be back uh in order to keep the theme of the show though because this is celebrating game releases from 2021 uh, i figured i'll be adding in a couple more games uh these are games i kind of had on backup i usually try not to make the shows too long um however these games are also games i had in mind uh so we're going to be having tormented souls by mr maxi lobes and we'll also be featuring uh a showcase of inscription which is a neat game uh, i hope that you enjoy all these these are some great games that came out last year and uh, without further ado let's check out tormented souls featuring maxi lobes take it away hello there uh you just heard my voice during the commentary for back for blood he's blade did an awesome job so claps yeah to him. Uh, I'm going to be showing off Tormented Souls, a uh, very, uh, very closely reminiscent of Resident Evil with, you know, hints of a clock tower and and uh, Silent Hill and stuff in it. It's very much so classic survival horror, um, but uh going to be using a controller in my left hand and a mouse in my right hand for most of this run, which is pretty interesting. Um... Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get started in three, two, one, and go. A letter. So, I guess is the earliest question. Uh, this is definitely going to come up with a game like this. Uh, so, why do you have to use both controller and keyboard? I know most speedruns will use controller or keyboard. Uh, so, this is definitely going to be a weird situation we have here. Yeah, so I... So, okay, so this is not tank controls. It is directional inputs. Um, but menuing is faster with the mouse. If Well, okay, if you're fast about it. Um, so you're actually going to see me using the mouse for menuing and uh, various things like aiming and shooting and, and uh, you know... The, the usual stuff, but I will be doing all of the movement with the analog stick, and I will also be opening the menu with the analog stick, um, which will come in very clutch later on. Uh, so I'm just kind of using both hands to do different things in a more optimal sense. Uh, if you're if you're like a top top runner for this game, you use uh, mainly controller, and then you only switch to mouse for menuing. Um, but I've just kind of gotten comfortable with using both for, uh, for everything, so that's just what I do. Yeah, it's very interesting, because this, this is one of the only games where uh, I do that. The only other game that I do this with is uh, Shenmue, and it's very different, because you're not doing it constantly. So there's our first enemy. Um, I'd like to think that this game's enemy design is actually, like, really good. It's one of the better things about this game, in my opinion. Kind of reminiscent of something you would see in, like... Um, for those of you who know what the suffering is, uh, they're kind of like that, in a way. Very just strange body horror stuff going on. So 
though. You'll see a lot of spooky enemies. And right there, we got our first weapon. Uh, the crowbar will be acting as the game's kind of like knife. Uh, it's a decent weapon. It doesn't do a whole lot. And I think there is in the category that's like crowbar only that a few people run. Yeah, that, that category I've actually never seen before. Like, I've never watched it, but it seems... It seems interesting, you know? Also, if you do enjoy puzzles, uh, this game has an absolute load of puzzles. Mm-hmm. Some of them, you know, you'll... They're, like, very obvious nods to other survival horror games, where, um... Whereas others are actually quite unique. So I'm actually going to wait for this guy to go down the stairs a little bit. Just to play it safe. Because there's definitely, um... With, with survival horror, you know, there's always ammo management and healing item management. And in this game, I would say healing item management is uh, a little bit harder than ammo management in the, in the run, so... Ooh, that was a cool little 360 I did there. <laughs> some... just some shmovement. Accidental movement. Uh, so that swiping oh, attack. That... Uh, that swiping attack that you just saw. That the hitboxes are kind of weird, so you actually have to be really careful when it comes to those little sweeping attacks that you see. Um, gotta be very mindful of them. What are you going to say, Dices? Oh, I was actually uh, going to kind of elaborate on a similar thing. Uh, as I am going to mention, the early game, the main enemies are going to be these the little crawling guys. Um, and I think it's mainly just you want to avoid their left hand side or the right side, because they always do that big swing from there. Right, correct. It's deceptively huge. <laughs> yeah. And they also have an attack where, like, they spit at you. Um, it can quite literally go through walls. So, you gotta be really careful for that, too. A uh, neat thing about this run, though, is uh, this run does have its fair share of glitches, I believe it or not. We will be seeing a lot of them later, um, but I'm bringing this up now because you may have noticed, hey, we have this nail gun, there's a bunch of ammo around, so we're gonna be using for a weapon. Uh, it's going to be funny because like, this game does give you a good amount of weapons, but once we get a particular weapon, we're only going to be using that weapon. Correct. Yeah. As cool as the nail gun design is, it's, uh, it's pretty weak. Also, as for any uh, marathon run, uh, Maxi is grabbing plenty of the health items. Uh, these are morphines in the game, which is kind of horrifying to imagine uh, one woman just uh, jamming a bunch of morphine into her uh, <laughs> stream. That acts as like a health drink from like a Silent Hill game, and there's also I think like the med kit, which is like a full heal, which would be like the game's ampules. Yeah, exactly. The med kit is definitely more of the norm. Um, the morphine, however, that's a bit different. A little bit. A little bit. You uh, know, also, they were like, eh, health drinks, nah. Yeah. Uh, I do also want to give a, a special shout out because uh, this game was done at the uh, the previous GDQ event by uh, Rebecca Re, uh, who did a great job doing that run. Yeah, Rebecca's good people. Also, right now you're going to be seeing one of the minor uh, optimizations of the run. Uh, very often when Max is utilizing any of his menu options, he's actually going to be like combining items or also using the item. Um, in many of the classic survival horror games, it's not really worth it to go to the menu unless you have to, because obviously it takes more time to go to the menu. So you can see he combines the, uh, it's like the T and the knob. I don't know, the. it's like the nuts. I don't know the exact part of that. <laughs> but uh, he combines those. Uh, it's just uh, during the menu of using them just because it is slightly faster to do so. More efficient.
Uh, right now as well, Maxi is getting a lot of items that are going to... Oh, here we go. Uh, they're going to uh, be used for later puzzles. Uh, this game has a lot of, like, little roundabout ways. Like, he gets a knocker here, he got some acid. Uh, he's getting a lot of item pickups because right now this area has a few of the puzzle drops. And as he goes to the mansion, he wants to have very linear paths. Uh, also, I'm I hoping got... the knocker puzzle will go well. Yeah, that one's so silly. I be a bit uh, finicky. I got really bad luck on the spit attack. Um, so I took quite a bit of damage there. That's okay. Yeah, that uh, hallway is really hard to dodge. The especially the first guy, like he'll just not want to get out of the way. Yeah. Um, another one thing we could talk about is, you know, some actually just turn on the light here. Uh, this game has a darkness mechanic, so you either have to walk with a lighter, a flashlight, or have lights on. Uh, if you don't, you actually won't be able to, um, survive, you'll die. <laughs> Alright, so knocker puzzle time. Uh, should I explain this, or would you like to? <laughs> uh, do you explain it? One moment. Wait, is it one one three one or one three one one? Apparently, it's. Oh, it's one three one one. Okay, yeah, there we cool. go. I always know it by clapping. So this is an <laughs> audio puzzle or a rhythm puzzle. So it's like one one two three one, um, and it's a very unique puzzle. You were wondering, like, oh, you can explain it. Wait, he he stopped talking. Um, I didn't want to talk there because if I talk over an audio puzzle or a rhythm puzzle, that's like, oh yeah, let me just mess up your rhythm, Maxi. Yeah, I honestly, I think it's a really cool puzzle, but I will say it's a bit finicky sometimes. It's funny because that puzzle actually uh, borrows the idea from the game Galarians. Really? Yeah, Galarians huh. has the exact same puzzle, and they did that back in like the nineties. Yeah, Galarian's um, pretty pretty ancient. Yeah, and uh, further going with the puzzle, uh, you can solve it early if you know the pattern, which, uh, as we're talking about here, is the 131. Um, and you're supposed to figure it out from using a heartbeat monitor on, like, a statue, and then you, like, use the knocker, and then you just tap in rhythm. But if you know the pattern, you can just do it early. Also, at this point, um, we talked to uh, the only other character in the game to get this nuts, our uh, bolt. Uh, that's going to act as a uh, battery or a, a fuse sort of thing. And that's going to allow us to kind of go with these electrical doors. Uh, we'll get an actual, like, more opening later, less temporary. But, like, this is kind of like, oh, you have to open up more of the map. Uh, this game has a lot of opening the map. Uh, also, this room has a lot of safety resources. Um, we have some shotgun shells in the back. And there is a health kit, I want to say, on the shelf. Yeah. yeah. I was about to say the fridge, because I couldn't remember if it was on the shelf or in the fridge. But I'm glad I, uh, I'm glad I could watch the run along this. <laughs> That'd be such a good Silent Hill reference, like how you don't put health drinks in the fridge. Right. Remember, chat, don't put your health drinks in the fridge. Uh, also, Maxi is dropping off that little table inside the elevator, because the elevator is going to be... Um, it's going to go back up natively, and we're going to want to... We're going to get locked out of that area later, because we're going to get back the nut, the bolt. And um, we don't want the... We want to be able to... Make, we can get back in that area. So having the elevator uh, will allow us to get back. Uh, we're also getting the first part of the shotgun. I believe it is a two-part gun. So it's like, hey, you actually need to find the parts. If you don't find the parts, you can't get the shotgun. Or the game's equivalent of the shotgun. I... It's pretty much a shotgun. Uh, this game uses some unconventional weapons because they're very, like, they're not weapons, but they're like tools. Like, one's a nail gun, the other's like two pipes put together. Uh, there's also like an electric gun that we're not going to be seeing, which I guess kind of gives a hint of what weapon we will be using. Uh, as you can yeah, see, we're not making it back. It's just crazy because, like, that electric gun is so powerful. It is, uh, but luckily, uh, so you're talking about the glitch earlier that you'll be showing off later, uh, we're going to be doing a lot of damage to enemies, and it's kind of wild yeah. on how this works. Yeah, the electric gun, like, when I first played this game, I was like, whoa, this has to be used on the run, right? Nope. And, yep. Uh, but it'll be, it'll be fun what we do end up doing.
All right, so uh, now you can see, um, since we got the uh, the bolts back, I can, I, see, I'm not really good with tools, or tools, right? That counts as a tool. Arts? Yeah. Sure. Uh, it's all confusing sometimes. I, as, as a bolt, I'm pretty sure. Uh, the bolt acts as a, a fuse, and uh, now we're able to kind of open all the doors because the big fuse box uh, right there um, powers everything in this area. Yeah, we get it from uh, the only other character who's eating soup, and he's like, oh, there's a bolt in my soup. Which, like, how how did you not know there was a bolt in your soup, sir? Maybe his waiter hated him. I... I believe it. Which then also brings up the terrible joke, bolting for soup. Oh. Then they do the song 19... Uh... I guess 95 if you want to call ancient. I already saw, by the way, people were said, uh, 90s ancient. <laughs> okay, yeah, 90s, okay, l uh, all right. Sorry, my bad. I, I it's mean, not ancient. It is in terms of gaming. Also, while I do want to continue the joke, uh, right now we do actually have a really fun part, because Maxi's doing a puzzle to spawn in this boss fight. You have to move around counterclockwise like three times. It's so trippy, because like this is a seance, and like you don't spawn this fight unless you do this. And then we get the boss fight. So the boss fight, Maxi's going to make this uh, shotgun. Uh, he now has it, he has the ammo, and he's going to fire the gun at the enemy. However, whenever he fires the gun, he's going to bring up the pause uh, item menu here. Uh, the reason why is because that amps up your damage it just lets you nuke the enemies hard uh you're doing like maybe like five times the amount like you kill this thing in like two hits and he gets the knife which allows him to do more puzzles um it is just wild how much damage you can really do and uh this is why the shotgun's gonna be the primary weapon and we're not going to the other weapons yeah we also got like a really optimal fight there there's a there's like a weird unskippable cutscene that happens and it shows you um, it shows you that you can go pick up the knife, but uh, if you do the the menu like cancel, it will stop the cutscene from happening. Oh yeah, we don't have to do this. So that was a pretty optimal boss fight. It was very well done. Yeah, in the early routes, um, we wouldn't make the shotgun until. Right now, actually, when we go do this puzzle. So that was, um... The shotgunning that boss was kind of a... A thing that was established later. Also, I just want to shout out that I hate this puzzle. Um, because you find this rope on the ground. It's like, oh, it's rope. I can't cut it. And then you see, like, butcher's knives all over the kitchen. But then you <laughs> get this, like... You get this pocket knife and it's like, oh, now I can cut the rope. But you couldn't, like... I don't know, chew on it, use your teeth, tear it apart. There's knives yeah, literally gun. everywhere. Also, a new enemy alert. Um, these guys explode. That's really the best they, way yeah. to find them. Like, think of like the Iron Maiden from RE4. Yeah. They just implode spikes across their body. And like, it's very deceiving because it's not that the hitbox is large, it's that it lingers for way longer than you think it does. So, like, he... he it, they can be done. Dude, I forgot that that's a jump scare. Well, this is speedrun from the crypt. It is a horror hotfix. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh... We do have to remember these games are spooky. Very often, you they, people forget. Uh, they actually do forget that these are horror games. Yeah, true. So comfy. But yeah, the, the spikes, uh, the hitbox lingers for a very long time. It's very deceiving. And now we're just going back to the generator room to go turn off the power. And something I haven't mentioned about, like, the mechanics is that because this game isn't tank controls, but it's fixed cameras, um, it kind of does the same thing that Fatal Frame does, where um, you're essentially, like, holding the analog stick in a certain direction, and even if the camera changes, as long as you're holding it in that direction still, uh, 
you know, your character will continue to run that direction. So. Uh, I will admit, uh, it's very nice to have that, but at the same time, sometimes it can kind of trip you up if you try to readjust your analog stick, so. It's very, very important to have very good movement and understanding of movement in this speedrun. If you're going for, like, a top time. Yeah. Uh, right now, uh, some of you might be wondering, why do we have to turn off the uh, the generator? Um, there's going to be a path underground that is like covered in electricity, so we have to do a bit of backtracking. And also, there's like, oh, you could be in the dark again to kind of play around with this mechanic. Yeah, the darkness mechanic is really cool because like you get this crazy color scheme going on on your uh, on your screen, and things get pretty uh, pretty spooky. I like the way that they did it. Did I go the wrong way? No way. I did. <laughs> I thought morgue. it was an alternate path. The morgue. Here we are. I mean, either way, you pretty much did what you had to do, and that's the important part. I avoided the second bit of damage that could have happened. Exactly. It's called a safety threat. Positive. Also, now we're finally going to be jumping into a really weird mechanic that this game has. Um, this game is mostly grounded in, like, let's say reality. Uh, but this game has time travel. Yeah, this game goes straight up time splitters. Yeah, it's uh, one of the weirder things. Um... Wait, an enemy can spawn back here? Dude, there's an enemy here? Huh. Was this like a patch or an update or something? You know, I did see on the speedrun leaderboard it got updated recently, I think. Huh. Okay. Well. Yeah, that, I don't know, I remember there being an enemy there. That guy's rude. Well, we can uh we can have it at least once per show. Oh, would you like to do the honors? That's never happened before. Yay, there it is. Also, the run is indeed live. However, chat is peer recorded. But I see someone asking if this is live. Also, now we get to turn back on the generator, meaning the power is back on. Yeah, and thankfully we don't have to do that like super long detour. We got the shortcut door now. All right, so now we get to experiment with time travel. Uh, by using the power of an ancient medium, a VHS, uh, we're going to be able to go inside of a projector, and then you kind of get to alternate the or alter the past. Ancient media, by the way. Oh yeah, I, I want to run with it now. At this point, uh, people, uh, people in uh, the chat here, <laughs> they're saying ancient when it comes to PS One games. So. The ancients, uh, what is it? The, you know, it's like the, uh, what is it? What's the thing? The, uh, the library of Alexandra, but also known as Blockbuster. <laughs> That's what it was. Instead of books, it was VHS. That's great. I'm pretty sure I jumbled like five things together that all don't really add up. But you know what? It was fun anyway. Also, we pour acid on this, and it uh, says it'll break the lock in, like, days. Yeah. Which, I like how it says it'll take days to break when, like, this is meant to be a child, and, like, you're obviously going back in time years, so why not? I guess it wouldn't make sense to take days to break, but, like, I guess you're going well past the days. Also, I well love the past. fact that it's, like, it's just a lock. Why not hit it? 
She could do that, yeah. She has a crowbar. I feel like maybe wailing on it's not enough. I don't, I, I've never really broken open a lock like that. But I feel like most locks be shot. Also, we have a shotgun. I, I feel like the shooting The shotgun it. would definitely do the job. Yeah. Most certainly. Also, in okay, this to enemy's VHS, still here, right? Uh, he probably would be actually. Uh, but he won't be in this cage. He'll be in the other cage. So just about yeah, he'll be in the other. Just get out of here quick. Yeah. Move with uh, hopefully, there's not going to be too many other changes. By the way. Uh, yeah, hopefully not. That'd be fun, huh? Just gotta wait and find out. Um, right, we go this way first. Uh, also, now we have the uh, the key, and the key is going to be a very special key um, because it has it's a multi-purpose key. Uh, what this means is there's three puzzles on there, and you're supposed to turn them to open certain doors. Uh, certain doors are going to have symbols, and you kind of need to match the puzzle with the key. And it's actually a really cool uh, puzzle. Uh, for the person here, we're going to be having uh, two top movements, zero mid movements, and four bottom movements. Um, this is the best way of doing it, because you can you can memorize the puzzle, but why do that when you just memorize how many times you need to move things, right? Uh, it also exactly. keeps things really consistent. So, uh, we're able to get into the pharmacy, which is really just going to be getting us an item from the very back and another med kit. We got uh, the battery. Every, it is the battery. Uh, and every time Maxi wants to use this key on different doors, he's going to have to change it in order to match that. Which, um, we just write these down. Yeah, I, I have them all. Uh... As a note, for anyone who does uh, get into speedrunning or wants to speedrun, um, there is no harm in having notes for these things. Um, make them very simple. Uh, good examples of the keys is write down how many turns you got. So just something you remember, like for the next one, for the dining room, when we get into the dining room, uh, it's going to be a simple one for one, meaning Max will be uh, turning, you know, the top part once, the mid part four times, and then the bottom part once. Um, he doesn't have to worry about, oh, what symbols do I need? He can just go off the base number knowledge, which is very easy. Uh, the further we can break things down, the nicer. I think I was going the wrong way. I'm going the right way now. Also, a uh, nice part about this game is I do know a lot of the devs have been pretty speedrunner friendly. Uh, I know they hosted a competition. Um, they, they go into chat to uh, speedrunners do this game. Um, it's pretty nice to have that. Uh, some devs aren't very nice to speedrunning, so it's kind of nice when we do have that. Yeah, they they were super supportive of speedrunners. Uh, like, right right as soon as the game released, even. Yeah. They were uh, right think, on board with it. Yeah, I think they had a tournament recently as well um, for yeah. the console release. Uh, now I'm okay. Yeah, we're we're back on track. Yeah, this is actually like so. I've been speedrunning for a really long time, so uh, a lot of the time when I learn a game, it comes to me pretty quickly. Um, but when this game came out, like I had to make notes. I could not remember all of this when usually I could. I mean, the only other time I've had to make extensive notes was. The first two games I ever learned back in 2015, and um, Shenmue because it's six, seven hours long. So yeah, but this is like only an hour long, but it's got so many puzzles and so many little things you need to remember. So um, yeah, this was a pretty interesting experience for me. It's different. There's a lot of puzzles in this game. Like after doing, uh, let's just let's say three key puzzles. Uh, we're gonna hit our next puzzle almost immediately. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, and this is the monkey puzzle uh, coming up. Uh, we'll talk more about it once we're officially there. Uh, but first, we do have some resource gathering. Um, but you can see that there's this, uh, you know, um, well, there was uh, an ape here. Oh my god, I can't believe it. He's being, uh, he's being funged <laughs> by apes. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! 
Oh no. Uh, but yeah, you know, after um, after getting the scroll from this, um, you're going to be able to. Uh, there's going to be five like areas, and there's a giant poem that's telling you. It's kind of like the hear no evil, see no evil of like the um, you know, like the, the monkeys who close their eyes and their ears and all that. And you're supposed to kind of match the crime to the symbol, and then you like hit a gavel. Um, it's actually a really fun puzzle. So, uh, uh, the thing is, we're not going to really be doing it. We're just gonna, we're gonna know the answer. We're gonna be turning that, which is nice. And, uh, yes, today's theme is, uh, games released in 2021. There's a lot of fun one. A lot of fun games. Yeah, like, last year was great for horror games. Absolutely. Um, I think, like, what years have been really good? I don't remember... I don't remember how 2020 was, but like 2021 was great, 2019 was great, uh, 2017 was great. It's like every odd year we get really good releases. I'm trying to remember anything, what what came out in 2020. Um, the best body horror game ever, Bug Snacks. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> kind of bug, kind of snack. <laughs> um, right. Wait, what? Right, scroll. Yeah, and then, um, there we go. And then we hit the gavel, which Aye. is a hammer. And we get a staple gun. Also, apparently we hit a hype train. Yo, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm a fan, I'm a fan. I'll get on board. Yeah. Uh, and so far for the runs we have on deck, we have done Back from Blood. Uh, we have Torrent of Souls right now, and after this, we'll be having Inscription. Oh, right. The puzzle's in here. Yeah, so this is another fun thing with the alternate realities. Uh, you notice Maxi's been going through these mirrors. Uh, also, uh, did you uh, power up the gun? Up the gun, the the stable gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool, cool. Just make, just making sure, making sure. Yeah, that's one thing we actually haven't mentioned. Uh, sometimes when you pick up key items, um, wait. Yeah, no, we're good. We can get out of here. No. Uh, which room is it? Oh, I just forgot to talk to him, that's all. Uh, sometimes yeah, when you, you pick up key lights. items, like, you can actually interact with them as soon as you pick them up, which means you don't have to interact with them when you want to use them, which is, like, the tiniest little optimization. So now we have the flashlight, um, because we gave, <laughs> we gave him back his arm. He lost his arm, we found it in the alternate reality, we gave it back to him. You even stapled it back for him. Yeah, we stapled it on there. Easy fix. Learned that one from RE7. Exactly. Also, uh, alright, so now I know we were joking. VHS isn't an ancient medium. However... The next medium we'll be seeing is an ancient medium. Uh, I think we get it soon, at least. Um, is it in this room, or is it in the next room? Uh, I think I'm doing this a bit out of order, I'm not going to lie. Awesome. Out of the way, right now I know what you're doing. Uh, you're getting the, uh, uh, the puzzle here, which is like a dollar amount. You're supposed to get a coin. Yeah. And then we're going to play the world's most terrifying game of Simon in a moment here. Yeah. We're supposed to go do this. Hold on. There That's just go. a little out of order. Luckily with this type of game, it's um, pretty open on the exact order you can do things, so it's not too bad. 
Uh, but now that we have the lamp, uh, Max is going to be able to kind of go through areas with weapons. Um, before this, um, he was blocked because he had to hold the light source, the, the flashlight. However, now, since he has the, the light... Also, I like that stray hit that the guy's spitting. Um, he's going to be able to shoot the blockers so he won't get attacked. Uh, right now as well, uh, he's going to interact with his washing machine and... Oh no, it stopped. Oh, nothing spooky happens. Oh no, it puked. Oh no. Oh no. This is where the ape is. <laughs> Apparently. Uh, these guys are supposed to be mean. Uh, a lot of the crawlers. Uh, but going back to the ancient medium, uh, Maxi is now going to be getting a floppy disk, and that is absolutely an ancient medium right that there. That is very ancient. I'm gonna find that in fun uh... of me because I didn't know how to write to a floppy disk because I only ever use floppy disks as coasters. What? <laughs> I mean, rightfully so. Yeah, I mean, I, I I grew up with broadband internet, but I didn't use a floppy disk. I just didn't save my games. Okay. Now it's now time, time for, for this. the meanest game of Simon. Uh, this is RNG. Uh, Maxi's gonna have to focus. Uh, there are five games he'll have to play. And uh, it's literally just a game of Simon. Not bad, actually. Luck was decent. And you get blood. Blood. Exactly. All right, so now that we have all the tools for this area, uh, again, we kind of mentioned that it doesn't really matter how you do them as long as you get everything before the next part. Uh, we're going to be playing the yellow VHS that Max grabbed earlier from, I want to say it was like the, uh, the ICU room. Mm-hmm. Correct. Um, you can actually swap these out and it'll take you to different locations. Uh, you can actually go back to them too, which, um, I guess, spoiler alert, that's how you get the good ending. Um, at a point in the game, you have to return back to the original VHS, but um, they kind of give you avenues of going to the different areas. Uh, they also normally don't have enemies in the past, which is really nice that these sections are just puzzle-based. I think one of them does, but like most of them don't. And um, right now, Maxi is going to be putting the blood inside of the freezer here. And uh, that's going to allow him to... What's the word? It's going to allow him to make one of the final door quote unquote puzzles. Um, this game has like a couple of final doors. Like if you ever played Resident Evil um, HD remake, the, the the remake of the first game, uh, there's the the two crests you need to enter the end game. Uh, this game has the same thing. There's going to be three items ultimately you're picking up that if you get them, you can go to the end game. Uh, it's actually kind of funny because you could, there is mild out of bounds tech we'll be getting to later, but that you can't get anywhere meaningful with it. So it's been unfortunate. Uh, and now we're going to be able to go back and kind of get the things that we did. It's kind of the thing again, like, oh, things are going to be freezing with the, uh, you know, like, oh, I put the blood in the freezer. I put the battery on the, the charger. It'll take days for this to do. Bam. There it is. Got it. It also looks really cool does uh as well while we're here we get a nice loop because we go to the kitchen to get the frozen uh token uh we're going to be going to the computer uh to do the floppy disk puzzle and the answer to the floppy disk is uh it's a reference to the hit movie uh batman versus superman it's martha there we go can actually take it early you don't have to wait for the override to complete. Oh, is that how actual floppy disks work? <laughs> no. Oh, <laughs> just yank it out. Break the family computer. <laughs> Mom, I wanted to install in the end .exe. Why didn't it work? The ancient sin. Exactly. Uh, but we got everything we needed. Uh, we also got the battery back. Um, 
this is gonna be good because this is gonna allow us to kind of it's funny because we end up backtracking into a lot of rooms by having the puzzle item it explores new areas in these rooms uh, so we're going to be going back to the library right now, uh, which you might remember that was like one of the first uh, we used the knocker to get into that room. Uh, just going to use this early. Uh, just make sure at some point you do the uh, the library. Uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Go get the lift. Yes, yeah, so here's what I was talking about. The library, uh, you can uh, put the battery in, and now you can get to the other area. Also, this game is really mean because it's like the old, it kind of has the homage to the old school games, where it's like, oh, you didn't open the the tray, the battery can't go in there, it's closed. Like the game really believes that you have to have it perfectly done. Uh, also, this puzzle uh, is going to be painful. Uh, God, what what is this? It's, is it in my splits? It's not. Uh-oh. I can never remember it off the top of my head if I'm de-rusting it. Uh, worst case scenario, I'll be fumbling with this one when we go to the next area. Yep. I'm just going to do that and hope that that was the right combination. But we will see. We'll find out. Uh, we got the second of the three final area, final things. Uh, I think now you'd be um, going back to that floppy door, by the way, I think. Oh, right. Oh, dude, I went the long way. <laughs> it's all good. It's also, it's also why it's nice to have uh, commentators for the run. Some things I do remember well. Uh, I'm kind of in the area as well where I haven't ran this game in a hot minute, but it's a very neat run. It is good. It is a good run. Uh, there's the library. Uh, that's a uh, library one. Oh. Ah. There we go. Dude, it's so funny, like, because this game got an update, I think the splits are all messed up on my end. Oh no. Yeah, so they've been completely wrong this whole time. It's been it's been stuck at four milliseconds as well. It's been paused all the time. Oh no! <laughs> so I'm like having to like skip and restart. Also, there's or... morphine in this room. Yeah, there's morphine in that room. Oh, it comes in clutch. Also, now we're introduced to um, really the the late game enemy that's gonna be chasing us for like a good chunk of the time here. Uh, I think his enemy name is just Anna. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if they have like a like an edgier name or like a monster name, but everyone just calls them Anna. Uh, the whole thing is um, certain rooms, music will play. If that music plays, they will be chasing you. Uh, sometimes it's not bad. Sometimes it is. Um, I yeah, think in the it, run, normally it's the same rooms too. It's pretty similar rooms, yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, we have the the patented W E forty. Mm hmm. So cheeky. Yeah, not to be confused with W D forty. Oh, we got Anna here. Oh, but she's on the other side. Perfect. There we go. So that's um kind of how Anna will be dealt with. Um, if she's in a really bad position, um, your options are either one, exit and re-enter the room and hope she leaves, or two, uh, you shoot her and then that will stun her. Uh, also, one of the weirder puzzles that this game has, this one was mean because it really exemplifies the whole you must do it just right. Um, there's going to be, well, one, a really big dude. Like, this guy is strong. Um, so I'm actually going to shoot him. Uh, and during this, uh, you're going to use the WE-40 on both the top and the bottom gears, and then you're going to hit it with a hammer. Um, yep. Very often you'll think, why isn't it working? And then he's like, oh, there's two sets of gears. Also, I'm assuming that was an Ana spawn. Yeah, that was Ana. I don't play the game with audio, so I kind of have to assume. It's like, well, he re-entered uh, re the room. That had to be Ana.
Yeah, Ana's like, the music when Ana spawns is so loud, so you will know. Also, now we have a uh, very, well, well, back to another puzzle. Uh, this is the clock puzzle, and uh, this is going to be needed to, I think, get like a marble or something. Uh, the answer to this is Christmas on 8, 15, tw uh, and 25 seconds. Also, the worst part is uh, Maxi made it look really easy. However, uh, you have to actually catch the marble. Like, it doesn't just pop out so you can have it. Like, it'll pop out, but it'll also keep retracting until you actually grab the marble with your uh, mouse. Which is fun, in a way. If not kind yeah. of mean. <laughs> it's so funny, like, when Failmore was running this game a lot, he used to call that the one-cycle marble grab. Uh, it's accurate pops out one time you just snatch it okay this is Anna again I can't dodge her unfortunately <laughs> Anna is all not the way being back. kind I thought maybe she spawned next to the door that she spawned next to last time but that was not the case um and yeah uh, this is showing that even if Anna does spawn like in the first time we went through here there wasn't a problem because she spawned on the good side but if she doesn't spawn in the right spot you're just not gonna be able to get past her oh wait yes I am doing this right yeah you should be good as long as you uh, unlock that one door that uh is at the end of this hallway yeah that's also the one of the problems if you don't remember to like unlock doors in certain parts then it's bad all right, you got good, Anna. Yeah, Anna's like really, really slow, but the hitboxes in this game, as you as you just clearly saw, are ridiculous sometimes. So, oh yeah, you don't want to mess with her. Um, one two six six one two. Wait, what? Uh, one, top two, one, two, six, six, one, two. I, I don't remember that one actually. Thank you. I write them all down. <laughs> yeah, I, it's the best see, way of doing it. See, my splits are all messed up though. No like, right now, I'm I'm thirty seven minutes ahead on and world record pace. Clearly, yeah, I'm ar I'm like already in the sewers later. Like this is yeah. Anyways, um. Gonna kill this guy. We're gonna take some morphine. Which is like another very important like optimization that like you need to do stuff in just one menu. So if you need to heal, if you feel like you're in caution, you should probably wait until there's an enemy that you need to kill, and then you can just do yeah. both at the same time. So there's gonna be one puzzle later that I don't I, I actually I do remember it. Okay, I was like I was reading my thing here. I was like, do I remember how to do the puzzle? And it's the the TV one that's later because that one's mean. Yeah, the TV one. Um, I like how oh, every really time dumb. we talk about the puzzles in this game, it's this puzzle is mean, and I guess they're all mean. It just every puzzle is meaner than the last. Oh, like, that's... Uh, right now, you'd be um, going to the ID card, which should have been in the sewers, I think. If you, but you get the ID card? Oh, I got it. Yeah, I got it. All right, so you're going to the three-item door. Yeah, we're going to the three-item door, which leads hey, us we to... we can see the out-of-bounds. Uh, uh... Make a save, actually. Yeah, let's save. Where is the... Where can I save my game? Um, go back. Uh, you can go to the... Um, it's the room with the guy, like the, the dead guy, right next to the... Uh, the office. So I'll go back um, down the hall. Down the hall. Yeah, this one. And then make a left. Uh, here, let me get my nail gun for this guy. Uh, it's funny because I'm pretty sure saving the game uh, makes us lose more time by doing it, but it's really cool to show off. Yeah, if you mess it up, it's literally just it's over. And oh I right! You need things to save in the this game. room, though. Can you imagine if there's not? That'd be funny, but uh, oh, there it is. There it is. Right. 
Alrighty. Uh, so normally, um, saves cost uh, resources in this game, uh, which are these little tapes. Uh, you wouldn't normally be saving throughout a run. I mean, if you need to, you can. Uh, it's a good safety measure. Um, this skip has a potential to softlock the game. However, it's really cool. And that's why we're saving the game here to show it off. And... I, I will fully admit right now, though, that um, the backtracking and the saving in order to make this glitch work loses more time than just not doing it. Exactly, yeah. But you know what? It's called a swag strap. Uh, so anyway, to explain the glitch, what's going to happen is if you aim the gun just right here and back up, you can actually get out of bounds. You'll see she hops. Uh, and then you can kind of just run into the void, fall down, and hey, look, you're at the, uh, you're at the bottom. Uh, this I is did the it first try. I first try. should have just gone for it. but <laughs> uh, Even still, it's better to have it. I, was I, I know what happens. All right, so you don't have it. Uh, God, this is the fun part. Uh... That might be it. Oh, this one's gonna be a little bit. It's all good. Oh my goodness! I'm sure that the top is the bottom. That's the main thing. Yeah. And it's so hard to do this because it's upside down. That. Um, is your like quick? Uh, I think the it's the bot. Yeah, that one. Because that one needs to be facing the, uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, for the bottom one. Oh. Have that face the, uh, the three. Yeah. And then oh, I my goodness. I, I think the four one. I think this is incorrect. Either way, at the end of this, I'm saying first try. Uh, this is one of those puzzles that if you mess up the slightest, recovery is a pain. There oh, thank we go. goodness. First try. Um, first try. Whoa, 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 Dude, I was on top of the puzzle while doing that. I didn't know you could do that. Hey, you landed well. <laughs> that was confusing. It's funny, though, because even with the going out of bounds, you can't, like, pass the door, so you still need all the items, which is why yeah. it doesn't save more time. It's funny because there are a couple of other out of bounds strats you can do in this run, but they're they're either soft lock or they're just not faster. Yeah. But there are a couple. I I toyed, I found one in the library, and it just like you can't get to the door in time. Oh no! Go this way. It's a big guy here. Oh, okay. The range. He he ate his Wheaties. He was ready. So this puzzle was interesting. Uh, you touch the ring finger. That's it. Yeah, this one confused me so much when I first played, because I was like, I don't have the item for this, but also I found, like, every item in the game so far. And then it just poke. Yep. All right, so now we're in the sewers. Um, this is um, like kind of where a lot of the end game is going to be. Uh, a few things to do here is one, we're going to be having to get the the final final door puzzle done. Every puzzle in this game is now the final door puzzle. That's just what horror games do. It's all right. Here's the big three item puzzle. This gets you to the end game, but this gets you to the real end game. And then there's one more, which is like, all right, now you're at the final boss. Like, there's three final doors in this game, and they're all considered to be final doors. Yeah, that's pretty wild. This, it's because like, the, it's the game that keeps on giving, but at the same time, you're like, okay, this has to be the final door, right? They added Dude, an enemy this there. enemy was never here they before. They added an enemy there. I think you can uh, expend some shots on him now. Yeah, he's been pretty good on shotgun ammo. Uh, new enemy add though. Uh, yeah, that guy was not there previously. Also, hey, uh, I just realized something. If you're on the new patch, you can uh, get top two in this game now because there's one submitted run for the new patch. Oh, they split categories? Yep. That makes sense because of the new enemies and stuff. I was wondering why there was a category split, and now I know. Makes sense. Yeah, that's so funny they added a guy there. There's some mean ads. Yeah, I wonder why. 
Uh, but now we have more. Um, we got we got the two items needed. I know one of them was like a dial. I don't know what the other one was, but I know you need it. Need both. Uh, See, now I'm going to be questioning on where the enemies, like, actually spawn in. Because I don't know if I remember that guy either. No, that guy's, yeah, that guy's okay. uh, always been there, but... Okay. He's usually pretty passive, which is nice. Uh, and now we have uh, one of the most annoying puzzles in the game. Uh, this is the, uh, the vault puzzle. Uh, you're going to be using a TV to open a safe. Uh, the way I remember this, uh, do you know it or no? I think I do. Or I try it out, I'll tell you what I, uh, how I do it if you uh, have any issues. Uh, two, eight, four, six, three. That was not it. All right, or is it two eight you. four three six? Uh, it's, go to Yin or right, Yin Yang. Turn off the TV and back on. All right, eight to the right. Five to the left. What? Oh God. Back to Yin Yang. Uh, just just in case, uh, you know, because sometimes it's finicky. All right, eight to the right, five to the left, seven to the right. Oh God, you do this so much differently than I do. And Hold then, on, let's go back. Yeah. So it's yin yang spider. Then I have, well, the way I have it was I did yin yang. A spider five to the left after that, or five to the right. I could be really cryptic in all these. Whatever, we got it. You know what? It works. We, we, we do that puzzle completely differently. That's so funny. <laughs> That's trippy. That is really trippy, yeah. I didn't know you could do it differently. <laughs> yeah, I... Maybe it's not that we do it differently, it's that we have it laid out differently in our splits, like different directions. Maybe. Wait, did I? Okay, yeah, I got them. Okay. There we go. I was just making sure I got both before I leave here. Yeah. So funny how that works. And now we're back on track. This game has been quite mean, though, with some of the enemy spawns. Oh, Anna. Speaking of. Yeah, they, there we go. All right, so uh, one of the neat things now is uh, we have the, um, the medallion. And it's a hidden room in the back here. But if you go back the way you initially came into that office, there's a little hidden door just like behind the shelf here. And it's the uh, the room of children. And then you find out secret room. And then it, realistically, it's just the plot twist room. It's true. That, that's what it is. Uh, if you're wanting to play this game, know the story. Like this is the room that tells you a big plot twist. Um, I don't know if she says it out loud, she might, but in this room we get a uh, we get a fish hook, because we're going to go fishing later, and, you know, we have to make sure we go fishing. And you need a hook for that. Uh, and now we get this, like, weird little button. And hey, we get more time travel videotapes. Heck yeah, dude. Ancient times, here I come. Exactly. <laughs> Back when Flannel and Nirvana was in power. <laughs> uh, I was assuming that was Anna. Yeah. Oh, dude, there's so much Anna. I know. <laughs> I mean, maybe they upped her spawn rate or something. Uh, all right, so we're going to go back to the... Um... We're going to go back to the, uh, the the EHS player, the videotape player, and now we're going to play the red tape. Uh, this tape is going to be the last of the uh, time travel tapes. 
And uh, we're gonna play a fishing mini game. Actually, that's right. Uh, we're gonna have a fishing mini game in this next portion. It's not no. as good as Deadly Premonition's fishing mini game, but oh, it's no. up there. Uh, hey, we're definitely. Uh, I, I can't. Um, I can't. I can't imagine that anything will go wrong in this fishing mini game. Hey, look, it's us, and uh, we're taking her eye. And yes, now. <laughs> that was a pun. <laughs> I think I may have been wrong. You know? Uh, yeah, you go back in time, though, and you find your character is missing an eye. We took our own eye. It was a time travel plot. Don't worry about it. It just, it happened. Uh, oh, now God. we're going to go back to the main uh, office that we started uh, in. Yeah, yeah, back yeah. to the office. Because, oh, uh, yeah, we have the quick entrance now. Uh, do you remember the pipe cap puzzle? Yes. Okay, thank God. I uh, I have it on my screen. Perfect. I am sick of Anna already. I think she they really did up the spawn rate in the uh, the patch. They had to have. Because I don't remember there being this many Annas. Either that, or maybe I just yellowed more. Nah, I've, I've never had on a spawn this much. Alright, so now we're going to the, the second final door. And this is the actual entry into the endgame. After this, like, anything else will just be boss. Um, but uh, we're actually going to go fishing. So we use the fishing hook on the eye, and that's going to allow us to uh, solve part of the puzzle. And then we're just going to activate the other panel. Like, this panel is like, oh, you need two eyes and synchronization on two panels. So uh, that's what we needed to cut out our own eye. It was absolutely necessary. But I like how she doesn't take the eye back. I mean, I guess it wouldn't work, but, like, I don't know. It makes me wonder how this guy got in. Good question. We're just waiting there behind the whole time. Right? Like, excuse me, sir, but how? He evaporated. <laughs> also, this game uh, loves to do the thing of bringing items that um, every item has meaning. Uh, so a fun thing in this game is uh, the lock from the very first puzzle in the game is actually used uh, on like one of the last endgame puzzles. So you're wondering, why do I have the lock in my inventory the whole time? Uh, because it is a necessary puzzle item. Open up the, um, I guess the bunker, I think is what it's called. Yeah, it's the bunker. Yeah, the bunker. Yeah, this is where you get like a lot of story stuff. Yeah. That, that sweet then, end game um, story. Story wise, this game is someone asked about the story. Um, really, the synopsis is you're looking for a little girl, short black hair. It's Sanha one. Um, but also there's like two characters in this game. So it's yeah, it's like it's not a complicated it. story at all, but like yeah. it, it has it, it has its twists and like a lot of it is it is a very tropey game. It's fun, though. It's a very good game. Yeah. It is good. All right. Uh, so now we're kind of introduced to the um, the final actual like common enemy. Uh, these are the I think they're like the miners, the prospectors, or something like that. They're there's some dudes who were uh, hired by the big bad guy uh, to get like eternal life. Yeah. And uh, their thing is they activate when you get in range and they hit like a truck. Yeah, they hit really really hard. The upside is, uh, you know, we have the power to break the game, so they're still pretty easy to kill. Yeah, precisely. The The double damage shotgun is just... It carries this run, honestly. Uh, right, this way. Uh, this is gonna be a fun, uh, enemy encounter as well. There's gonna be a couple items in here. Hey, shotgun bullets! Uh, and there's also gonna be one of the pipe caps. 
Um, both of these are needed because we will need a lot of shotgun shells later, but this also activates the enemies in the area. Uh, oh, there's the dodge. Easy. Yep. Uh, the dodge went well. Uh, it activated both of them, but Maxi just immediately passed them. Actually, gonna kill this guy because yeah. on I the way back he might get bulls. me. Yeah, so. I think I have bulls. I yeah, I, I believe I have enough shoddy shells. Uh, there's also more in like this room too, I think. Uh, uh, when you're heading back, uh, I'll tell you where. Wait, there's morphine in that cell. Yep. See, I'm learning a lot about morphine spawns. Also, we get a gas can. You notice Maxi opened that up. This is one of the ones I was actually kind of alluding to earlier with this game because, oh, you want to pour gasoline? You didn't open the gas can, silly. Uh, so not this uh, one, but like when you exit, the, all the cells go right. So right. Oh. Oh, I never knew this was here. Hey, you see, I know all about the bullets. We're teaching each other. I do not know about the health though, so I die very. I just I, I try to shoot more than I heal, because <laughs> I do not know where the health is. Honestly, faster than taking damage and healing too many times. And then I, I feel like having backup bolts, like every now and again in case uh, you have some risky fights. It's nice. Uh, plus, it's going to allow you to possibly shoot some guys uh, who are going to get in your way. And uh, I think we need one more pipe cap still. Or do you have three? I think I have them all. Uh, wait, I gotta go back down the stairs, right? Uh, up. Because first you need to do the, uh, the gasoline. Right. Yeah. The gas puzzle's up. Oh, you have all the pipe caps. Yeah, you're right. You have them all. Yeah, right now you're doing the uh, the gas can, which be there we go. This way. Yep. Yeah. All right. So this puzzle is a great time, and uh, it is a series of. Do you know pipes and how things are open and closed? Um, luckily, if you just know the diagram or you know where to put these, it's no issue. Um, they're always going to be the same. Ant I think there's multiple answers to this, actually. Um, but it's a series of placing the right pipe caps, but also knowing what valves to have open and closed. Um, I'm going to let Max take the wheel here on this one. Uh, I think he has the, uh, the answer. And let's see if it works. Yay! Yeah, I always have this. Uh, I always have this one open. Puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. Like it is one that is extremely like just have the diagram, <laughs> because there are a lot of factors. Like every open close valve, all the pipe caps, everything. Uh, with that though, we're actually getting ready to go onto the final final boss rush section thing. I call it a boss rush, but like it's just a group of strong enemies and then a boss. Is that a boss rush? I, I don't ever know what to consider that. Uh, I would say this is not a boss rush, but it kind of is at the same time. I would say it's like a mini boss and then a yeah. boss. Because like they're definitely intending, you have to win a fight and it's against like four of the strongest enemies in the game. We're not bosses at least. Also, there's the generator, uh, so now we can load the water. And now we're going to be going to the end of the game. Uh, this part, I think the second, uh, the actual boss fight's risky, but I, the, the actual, like, the four hammer dudes here, it's not gonna be hard. 
Um, oh, big plot twist. The only other character in the game was the villain. I can't believe it. <laughs> Who would have ever guessed? There's two characters. One of them is bad. Okay, so uh, the hammer guys... I love this part because they're going to, like, die immediately. Like, he just paints. <laughs> they literally just flatten. Yeah. Uh, and this is how powerful it is. Also, funny enough, the, the gun bullets actually go through them, and you can do enough damage potentially to kill both of them, technically. Um, but that uh, is immediately one fight, and you have a little crest here. Yeah, I tried going for the double kill there, but uh, he was a little too far away. Yeah, um... It was a really good fight. Uh, right now as well, they, like this room gives you a lot of resources just in case. And um, if you want to get the good ending, you can make good ending decisions here. Yeah, we might as well. Yeah, may, may as well go for the, the goodish ending. Takes like two seconds. Yep. Uh, killing Ana is the way of getting the... There's there's like three endings in this game. And this would be the, the good-ish ending. If Max wants to get the full good ending, he should be able to if he wants to. He can also get the good kind of ending. And there's also the bad ending. The bad ending is if you just let Anna be there. Mm -hmm. Like, throughout the game, you're just kind of pick clues that, hey, wait a minute, that, that blob chasing me isn't really all that bad. So it's a very story-driven game. Um, the fastest ending is just... I, like don't do the bonus thing and that's it so you can get the good or bad ending getting the bad ending is obviously the fastest because you do nothing that is how you do it all right so now we're gearing up the final boss fight um the final boss is actually really cool and i'll uh, help break this down um he's gonna do a sacrifice and he's gonna become uh that fleshy god in the middle uh what max is gonna do is he's going to shoot it Actually, he's God now. We're going to shoot it. Um, <laughs> so the game's kind of weird because you're supposed to do damage in phases and like you shoot and then you shoot the eye and then you can do this little puzzle. Um, it's actually a really neat fight because you're supposed to get all three of these done while also doing damage. So it's not just a do damage fight. However, since we're doing so much damage, it kind of carries over. So what's going to happen is... Normally, you can't shoot the tentacle eyes unless you've shot the, the mid body part. However, since Maxi did so much damage to the mid, that damage actually carries over and he's going to be able to shoot it. Which is, as long as he doesn't get hit or mess up, he can actually do the puzzles with the tentacle on there. Uh, this is a minor sequence break they're able to do because of the damage glitch. Uh, as well, these are a bit awkwardly timed, so uh, it's nice that he's hitting these first try. Good, two out of two. We have one more of these, and as long as he does not drop. Um, any of the uh, the hits, he should be able to get us a very clean. Uh, also, there's a lot of resources in this fight, too. They didn't want me to be totally uh, left out if you are having trouble. So there's like health, there's bullets, there's a lot. You know, I'm not actually don't have sure to what reload makes here. Works either. Yeah, you don't have to reload anymore. That was the final hit, provided you don't mess this up. All right. Nice. Uh, the boss fight's not done, but the game is not over yet. And... It's a drill. A giant drill pierces the god. And now I just head to the, uh, end of the game, which is the exit mansion. Uh, that is when time will happen, but it's been a good run so far. I don't remember how this game does IGT, but it was definitely, uh, neat being able to see the, uh, the new patch... It's yeah, it's like a it's like a few minutes slower, I think, or faster than RTA. Yeah, I will see. I'll tell you what uh, world record is. World record right now is one oh nine uh, IGT. Oh yeah, there's no way we cracked that. <laughs> Oops. I uh, will see though. We'll see. Actually, maybe uh, my RTA was one oh five. And then I think my P I know my PB is like a 59. So maybe you did. If you go for the uh, the, the good-ish ending and not the great ending. Yeah, we're, we're not doing the, the super yeah. good ending. Uh, just to tell anyone who I was wondering for the game, if you go back to the first tape to that, like, the lock, you can break the lock open. 
Uh, at some point in the game, you had to find a lock breaker. So if you do an optional puzzle, you can. Oh, we can't even do it. You don't have the thing. Yeah. Yeah. So we can't even do it if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, you can actually go back to the lock um, and break it with a faster tool. And then you can save the child in there. And that's the, the good ending. Uh, we're getting the good-ish ending because we spared uh, Anna. And uh, time will be coming up once I think the end game screen hits. Yeah. So I'll that, let you know. Yeah, there's a uh, that has been tormented souls. And time. All right, you got a one twelve twenty five. Hey, that's a free top two. <laughs> My PP is like a fifty seven or something. <laughs> Free top two. New patch. New patch. Very, very optimized. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, that was Tormented Souls. Uh, Maxi, you have any uh, shout outs you want to give or anything like that? Uh, I mean, if, if you want to follow me, if you want to see other runs that I do, I have a pretty big library of speedruns. Um, so twitch.tv slash Maxi uh, Shout outs to Rebecca running this at uh the main event yeah uh last time and uh the rest of the tormented souls runners they're they're pretty darn good at the game um and uh yeah thank you for for having me as a, as a last minute little fill in absolutely I appreciate yeah. it i've been putting your link in chat i want to say absolutely thank you again for being able to fill in for this um you know yeah. definitely um these things happen uh, i don't ever <laughs> want to make like i don't ever want to feel like runners on the show are um you know, like just oh, you do your run and get out. So uh, I definitely mm -hmm. want to say thank you for being able to fill in. Uh, for Cat, we'll be having you back on for the next show. Yeah. But if you did enjoy Maxi here, he's a veteran of the show. He's been on a few times, and uh, yeah, that was Tormented Souls. So definitely check him out if you have not done so yet. Uh, that being said, we do have one more run for the night, and this is going to be a uh, weird one, but it should be fun. Um, I do want to thank you all for watching so far, but and we're going to be right back very quick. Uh, we're going to go on a quick wellness break. This time to stand up, touch your toes, stretch your legs, do what you generally need to do. We're going to be right back. All right, everyone, we are back from the break. Welcome back. I hope you enjoy that run of Tormented Souls. It was definitely one of my favorite games of last year. I think it was a nice homage to classic horror, and it was just a fun release in general. And uh, I definitely think 2021 was a great year for horror. Uh, continuing on with this, um, this is going to be a weird game, and this is a game I really do enjoy as well. Uh, this game is going to be called Inscription. Uh, something to be, to be noted, I actually did want to show this game off in a way that's going to be a lot more, uh, perfected. Uh, so this is going to be kind of a weird crossover to another show we have called Mercy Kill. Um, uh, I'm a bit rusty at this run, but every now and again, if I need a backup runner and I don't have a lot of time to get one, uh, I run a lot of games myself. Uh, it's part of the reason why I run speedruns in the crypt. Uh, I guess as a brief introduction to myself, in case some of you are newer here or do not know, uh, I am McDysis. I run 123 plus different horror speedruns. Um, I'm able to put a lot of these shows together because I know so many of the horror speedruns and their various communities, even if I don't run the games themselves sometimes. Um, so this is just kind of a neat gem that came out last year, and I'm going to be showing you just kind of a... I like to call it kind of like a proof of concept of a category. Uh, you may notice my estimate's 40 minutes. Uh, the world record in this category is like 12 minutes. Uh, this is a category that can either be really good or really bad. Uh, I'm not sure which one exactly, but we will see with that. Uh, anyway, uh, I'll be showing you Inscription Moon Percent. Um, the idea with Moon Percent is we're going to be doing the really cool part of the game, which is the one everyone probably knows about if you know about this game, which is the uh, the demo portion of the cabin. It's not the demo because you do beat all of the cabin, but it'll be the main first area. Um, I am kind of putting it ba on a minor mercy kill sort of rule, though, uh, just because this run can get to some pretty self-locking territory. Uh, I've given myself 40 minutes to beat it. Uh, we might beat it much faster. We might need to even try a second run out. Uh, either way, I have the run started on a part where we can have time uh, ready to be called. But I hope that you'll be excited. I'll try to explain as much of this run as I can. And hopefully, at the very least, you'll learn something new about an interesting concept. Uh, anyway, without further ado, if we're ready, we can start time in a moment here. Uh, ready? All right. Three, two, one. Let's go. Okay. 
So Inscription is a horror card game. Uh, first things first, um, the intro will always play the same. Uh, this is kind of a portion that's going to be teaching you about the base mechanics, like items, like cards, and stuff like that. Um, our base inventory is going to be a couple squirrels and a uh, pliers. Um, to kind of explain everything, you'll kind of see the game right now. This plays kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, you have squirrels, which have no cost. Um, you have uh, cats, which is an infinite sacrifice tool, and you have the stoats, which uh, is a monster. So kind of talking more about this for a moment, the idea is simple. You have to do five damage to your opponent. Uh, you have to be able to uh, win that. Uh, in addition to that, uh, I probably should have done that. That's fine. Not the end of the world. Uh, you have different types of monsters that will go. This is kind of weird because it is a roguelike horror game, which is going to be a fun way of describing this. Uh, the reason why it's a roguelike is because starting uh, in the after the first set of fights, it's going to be very different on what happens. So this is always going to be a bird or a wolf cub. Uh, there's some strategy you can use. I like taking the bird. And I'm trying to make a deck that's going to be able to help me beat the whole game in one loop. Uh, this game is meant to be a really difficult game, and they want you to keep losing so you can learn the base mechanics. Uh, I don't want to do that. That's bad. So you can see I'm trying to make very particular monsters. Um, to start things off, our early game powerhouse is going to be the Infinite Sparrow. Uh, I like the Sparrow because he flies, he can give me some bonus damage, and he's a pretty cheap unit. Uh, as well, uh, let's do, uh, I got some bad luck, that's okay. Uh, let's check here. It's all right that I got some rough luck. It's not the end of the world. Uh, you may notice I'm also burning through my items. Uh, this is actually a little bit intended. Uh, the reason why I'm burning through items uh, is because I actually want to be able to get more items later. Uh, a large portion of how this game's going to work is going to be the requirement of items. Uh, the players are going to be good, but we'll be getting a lot better stuff later. Uh, anyway, I should be able to win this shortly. I'll say, look, there's my sparrow. It took him long enough. And in this game, there's also multiple types of fights. Um... All right, I should be able to win on the this one. Let's go here. I think one more turn after this. There we go. Perfect. So the reason it's called Moon Percent as well is because that's going to be the... Wow, actually, wait, what? Oh, that's fine. Also, look, I yank out my own teeth. Beautiful, right? Uh, items are my ways of cheating. Uh, there's going to be a lot of items that help me cheat, and cheating is going to be the best way of doing this. Uh, I'm going to be looking for some particular upgrades now. Uh, now we've started to have open paths, the game's going to be a little bit different. So I'm looking for an outer. I got a wolf, I got a raven, and I got a snapper. I'll take the wolf. Now with the RNG, it's going to be a little bit tougher. The reason why is because I need certain cards to be really powerful. Uh, first things first, I'm going to need a wolf to be at either four or five. Um, the amount of damage that you can do is going to be imperative to the cheese that we plan on doing to actually beat the game. Uh, the reason why is because, like I mentioned, this game wants to play in loops, and the game constantly wants you to learn the mechanics. Actually, a good example with good RNG here is I'm going to immediately lose this fight. Uh, the reason why is you get two lives in this game. That's okay. Uh, I'm meant to lose that. If I try winning, what will happen instead is I will uh, get something called uh, Eight Bears. Uh, there's another name for... Oh, wait. But, but, what? But, did I not... Oh, I didn't grab it. What? I guess I mashed too fast. There we go. Eight bears. Uh, eight bears is the you're going too fast, play the game right streamer. Um, also, I'm going to get items. So with eight bears, um, that will prevent you from winning entirely, and you don't want that. You want to make sure you can actually win. Uh, however, we can actually break this getting an item. So right now, I'm going to be getting... Let's go with the goats. Uh, let's go with a knife. Wait, what? Why do I have the knife? I'm not going to question it. Uh, and let's go with the this one. Wait, am I going to get eight bears? I think I should. I shouldn't have the knife right now. That's weird. Why do I have the knife? Either way, we can skip eight bears. Uh, let's start by doing the boss fight. This is the Prospector. The Prospector's gimmick is that um, he has this mule. And you may notice I actually have some cards with me. I have a four and a three. I don't actually want to play these cards too soon. Uh, the reason why is because if I play too many cards, he's actually going to be turning them into gold. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to just be kind of seeing what I can get. I have all wolves. That's okay. 
Uh, I am also going to just let's play this a little bit early because uh, then I can play some field control. Uh, I'm going to summon one of my weaker wolves. Uh, the reason why is because I want to make sure I can summon one wolf. This isn't the end of the world. Honestly, I do know I have one runner in chat I can ask about of why I have the knife. I don't know why I have the knife, I can always just not use the knife. Plus as well, if the cheeses don't exist, I gave myself a pretty generous allotment of time. Uh, also, I might have too much damage, so let's do something fun here. Uh, I'm doing this one for a particular reason as well. Because I want this. I want the boulder or the wolf to be gone. I don't need to break the mules. We'll see. I should definitely get the eight bears by the end of this, but we'll see. Alrighty, so now I should have enough damage. Uh, what we are going to be doing here is... Let me double check. Hmm. Just making sure it'll be good. I don't want to do this. Let's do... I gotta think for a moment. Because... I need a wolf in a different spot. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Cool, okay. Okay, we're fine. We're fine. Uh, or am I fine? No, I need to play area control. I am a, I am a dummy. That's fine. Uh, here we go. One moment. Why can't I? Oh, draw. Sorry about that. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna do that. And the whole idea behind this is yes, we need the heart of the cards. That's correct. I need to kind of expend some of my wolves just because I don't want to have. How do I have so many wolves? I guess that's fine. You might be able to tell that currently I'm really stressed about keeping my hand at uh, a certain amount. Uh, the reason why is because the moment that I end up winning, uh, he is going to be... What's the word here? He's going to be turning my two creatures into gold. And... That's going to remove two of my spots. I had to really think and make sure I wasn't going to mess this up and soft lock myself. Um, two of my things now turn into gold. That's fine. Uh, the knife will give me three damage on his life points. Uh, I'm going to use two of No, not you. Two of my squirrels. We're not going to have the wolf. And uh, luckily I don't have to use any of my items too much because I can just sort of win. Where's the stoat? There he is. There, we have five. That was a bit more risky than it had to be. But you know what? We got it. And that's fine. We don't have to cheat yet, you're always intended to be the prospector. Um, the game gets rough when you get to the angler, but having the knife might be kind of weird, so this might be a weird augmented category. Uh, right now I have a choice of cards, I like taking Child 13. Uh, the Gek is good, uh, Child 13, they're all actually pretty good cards, but I like having Child 13 for another infinite summon. It kind of lets me have something on the field I don't need to worry about. Wait, alright, so knife all right, so knife can drop on the first run. Okay, I'm happy with that. That's fine. That I didn't know that. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I didn't actually know that. I've never seen it. Hey, wait a minute. That's never happened before. Awesome. Anyway, let's see if I can now power up my wolf. I got health. Oh, I don't like health. I mean, not the end of the world. Uh what we're gonna do is I'll power up child 13. Uh, I actually really want... No, a Scissors Cuts card. Uh, what the knife does is it gives you three damage. I don't have too many cards either. There's a lot of things I have to keep in mind right now. Uh, we're going to be able to win this one pretty easily, I think. We're going to sacrifice you, and uh, I'll wait for a moment. Oh, he has an adder. That is bad. But luckily for me, I'm going to do a little move called cheating. Oh, I know I don't need to cheat. Never mind, we're fine. Uh, I didn't know Child 13 had two. I thought he had one. There we go. You get really, really fast wins. I'm actually looking for a special card right now, though. Currently, I'm looking for an adder. I'm getting a lot of mantis, which mantis is fine, but I need an adder. Uh, we're going right. I also need damage. Damage or an adder. All right, I finally got damage, so now I don't actually need to worry as much. I'm going to power up my four wolf. Actually, hold on. Yeah, power up four wolf. You're fine. This wolf can now win things in one turn for me. This is why I wanted to have the wolf here. Also, I've talked about totems before. They just kind of buff a certain type, so powers of reptiles. Okay, let's see what I get this time. Uh, I have a... Cool. Uh, although, let's see how this goes. He has that. That's a okay. I don't know why I played the squirrel. I probably should have sacrificed him into a stoat, but that is a okay. Because I don't have to worry, I can do this. Check this out. This is called cheating. 
You yank out your own tooth, and hey, now I win children's card games. Oh, I don't imagine this is a children's card game. Also, apparently I can't predict. I can't believe it. I'm a fool. Ah, it'll be fun. I'm not using the knife for that, though. Oh, never mind, we're fine. Alright, so now we win. There we go. The wolf's really powerful. That's the... Wait. You're kidding me. You're kidding me. Wait a minute. No. Wait. Oh, God. Oh, I know we're fine. Wait, are we? Are we? Are we fine? Hold on. Are we... I can't let it get bodied by snakes. Hold on a moment. Let's do this. Okay, wait. Hold on. Now we're fine. That didn't have to get weird, but it got weird. That was a weird upgrade. This has been a weird set of rounds. A very weird set of rounds. But now we're fine. Anyway, I'm still looking for an adder. Uh, the adder is going to be poison damage, and he's going to be very special. Uh, the adder cost, I want to say, two. I got a. It's all wolves. It's all wolves. This is a very luck-oriented run, I want to add. Uh, luckily for me, at the very least, I can power up one of my wolves. So now, instead of 5 damage wolf, I have a uh, 10 damage wolf. Uh, this is actually going to help me out in the event that I uh, don't get scissors. Because uh, I might need some scissors at certain points. It can also help me out in other areas. I do actually need to get items, so I'll be going there on my next set of rounds. That's never happened before. This game is still pretty recent. Alright, let's see though. Alright, so I have my Super Wolf, that is good. Uh, I have a round that will be A-OK -okay to play. Uh, so we're going to put in the Stow, we'll get some early damage. And then you'll kind of see the power that this Wolf really has. So I don't mind that he does damage, because what I'm about to do is even more damage. Alright, say hello to the Mega Wolf. Uh, the reason why the Mantis was such a good upgrade to have is because now I can do uh, 10 damage. 5 on the left, 5 on the right. Um, he did like 5 damage, it doesn't really matter, I'm just gonna immediately rush an attack. And hey look, I won. So, you really want to get busted cards as soon as you can, and it is a bit luck of the draw, and you have to kind of know what you're trying to do. So if it sounds like all the cogs in my brain are turning at once, that's why. I'm still looking for an adder. There's the adder. Alright, so the adder has an instant kill move, and the adder is super important for this. Um, I got a, another knife? Alright. Uh... Okay, this is going to be really weird. Uh, I guess I'll find out really quick if I'm on a bugged save or if I'm on something else. Uh, in theory, this was a new save right when I booted it. So, we're now on the Angler. Uh, the Angler is the second boss of the game. His gimmick is Fish. Um, it doesn't matter who went fast. It looks like I have really good draw. Uh, also, since I didn't die, I get Smoke. Uh, so we're going to do really good against the Adder here. Uh, I'm going to summon Child 13 and a Wolf. And uh, I can actually summon an Adder too, I think. Nope, I just win round one. Hey, look, I immediately won. Although, uh... Let's see how this goes. Do I get eight bears? I should get eight bears later if I don't get it now. There are eight bears! Okay, anyway, uh, I'm going to do something called cheating. Wait, knife? I thought that was scissors. Oh. Never mind. Either way, it still works. Not what I intended, but it still works. Anyway, I've now beaten the unskippable section. Uh, that is known as uh, eight bears. Uh, the idea here is that the bears uh, block you from winning. You're not supposed to be able to beat them. Um, I was actually expecting to rip out my own eye and get a lot of damage, but uh, that's a-okay. We're going to take the gag. Um... I made it work, um, I passed an unbeatable fight, and what's supposed to happen is you're supposed to be able to just, like, lose, because the game doesn't want you winning at this point, but as you can see, I won. Also, I need more items, so we use items for cheating. Uh, I definitely want to say that I play that on the fly, and I was totally expecting to lose there, uh, but that is okay. Wow, these are all terrible. Let's do, I guess, you. Uh, I don't remember that knife ever being in the game, too, which is really weird. I've never seen that knife before. I actually thought it would be the other knife. Uh, anyway, let us take a goat. 
And, ooh, these are bad items. I mean, I'll make it work, but these are some pretty bad items. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to business. I have an okay hand. Looks like I have an okay thing here. Uh, as well, I actually do wanna burn through my items, believe it or not. Um, so let's do, let's do this. I may put him in the bad spot, not the end of the world. Uh, the reason why is because I am now gonna do this. There we go. He killed my guy. Oh, that's sad. Uh, not the end of the world, though. I have an elk. I need two damage. Sweet. There it is. Two damage. All right, that's easy. That's easy enough. Other knife is the gold knife. That sounds right. That least sounds right. That's probably for the Casey's. You're right. I haven't done this game since the Casey's mod came out. Uh, anyway, I actually have a lot of cards, so I actually want to start thinning some of my cards. I don't think I have any pelts yet, which is good. Uh, this just spams your inventory full of stuff. Um, you can get some interesting cards, though, and I have a lot of money, so let's actually buy... Let's buy this one. Uh, you can get something kind of neat with it. You don't want too much, though, because you don't want to clutter your hand. Uh, we're hitting the end game area of this run so far, uh, so I don't want my hand being cluttered. If my hand's cluttered, I don't get the good cards, so I'm actually going to be getting a card upgrade. Uh, there's more items I can get later, so I do want to use some of my items to get more. Uh, but we're actually going to change the adder into the Gek. Uh, the reason why is because now I have an instant kill unit. Uh, the Gek can now kill anything in the game. This is going to be a special trick that helps us out later, but I need to make sure that Gek will be there. I've now given myself another avenue to break the game. Uh, okay, so now I have child 13. I have an okay hand. Uh, we're just going to win immediately. Uh, that's the plan here. Um, I actually do want to run through some of my items. Um, I could actually save that black goat. The thing is, I'm going to want... Um, another upgrade. I want more items, so I want a good chance to get scissors. Scissors are what I'm really looking for here. Or another trapper knife. I should use the trapper knife then, yeah. Uh, anyway, it looks like I have uh, nothing of value, so I'll take a mantis. And I get a shark. The shark's really good. Take the shark. So now I have another chance of being able to win, which is quite nice. And thank you, I'm glad you joined the commentary. I do need to get a good item here. Uh, my cards are pretty good. Uh, okay, that is beautiful. I get a turn skip and I get to rip out my teeth again. So now I have a good enough amount to actually get here. I think it's Casey's mod that's changed some of the things. Okay, so I don't have a powerful wolf, but I have some regular stuff, nothing in the world. And let's do this. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, I think I could just win. Maybe. Yes. Well, not win, but I do that. Well, actually, I may have just lost the round. No, I did not. Taking L is A-OK -okay if I do take an L. Uh, I just have to make sure I don't take too many Ls. Wait, can I? Maybe. Why didn't I get any of my good wolves? That's the question. Uh, I don't have to lose, but I think I will. I'll be faster to take a loss. There we go. I had a feeling the Raven Egg will get me anyway. So losing isn't the end of the world. It will make the next boss a bit tougher, but I'm going to go with it anyway. Um, Tenley losing immediately can be faster, and that was the last fight I have to do. Um, let's see what card I can get, and I'm good on items. So I get a Grizzly. Grizzly's really good. I may have actually gotten something really nice with the Grizzly because that could get me a five damage card. The more five damage cards you get, the better. I get a health. Oh no, I suck. Okay, power up the Gek, because Gek is my friend. Uh, I want the Gek to be able to live as long as possible because the Gek is going to act as a second pair of scissors. You might be wondering, wait a minute, you don't have scissors anymore. I don't need them. Having the Gek counts as scissors, which is why I was so excited. Anyway, now we're fighting the Trapper. Um, also, someone mentioned earlier, yeah, his eyes are still red, which is kind of funny. Okay, so I didn't really get a good draw immediately. Uh, that is all right. I don't have a bad draw, though. Uh, I can uh, have a little bit of fun with this. I just have to make sure I don't lose. Uh, meaning I'm going to have to play some area defense pretty early. Hmm... And, uh, I'm good on damage. Let's go. 
Also, a slight problem as well. Uh, you can kind of see that his hand is starting to become a little bit more mean. Uh, he has given me uh, leaping traps. Uh, this is kind of his base mechanic. I'm going to pull some teeth just from stuff. No, his eyes are red because he got into the eight bears phase, and I wasn't supposed to get to that phase. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a little bit sneaky. Uh, for one, I am going to make a stoat right there, and I'm going to play a snapper uh, right over here. Uh, the reason why I want to do this is because this will buy me time, and I can open the field. He's going to start turning my creatures into pelts. Um, this is bad for me a little bit, because I'm only going to have cards that really don't do anything. There we go. But now I need to get a little bit more. Also have a mantis, that's fine. Uh, what do I want to do here? Put you there. That should do the trick. And let's start saving. He flies. That's bad. Uh, so let's actually do this. Hmm. Hmm. These are only bad moves. Might need to cheat again. There's a lot of cheating going on, as you can see. Oh, no, we're good. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. Okay, I really need that wolf to come into action anytime soon. That wolf ain't coming into action, though. Where's that wolf? I need that wolf. Where's the wolf? I probably could have played that better, too. Oh, no. Luckily, there is another minor mechanic I haven't talked about yet, if I have a bad time with the fights. Uh, which, I do have a wolf, not the end of the world. Uh, I literally lose the round. Okay, see, we're gonna do something called cheating. So if you ever actually lose a round, guess what? You can continue. There you go. That didn't happen. I blinked. This is why I put the estimate in 40 minutes. It's a lot of thought. So luckily, you can go back to the beginning of the fight. And you can kind of think a little bit differently. Also, uh, looks like they gave me a... Well, just different positionings. Uh, so let's do this, where I am going to play this very unfair, I think. I might be able to. Let's see. Mm. I'm going to take a risk, put him there, and then, uh... Cool. All right, so I picked the worst guy, apparently. I love that. I'm glad I picked the worst one. Uh, the problem with killing any of these guys is they'll turn into other things, and I do not want that. So let's try this again. I need to buy myself some time. Exactly. He does cheat, that is fair. And the more we cheat, though, the better it'll be. That's really the main thing I'm gunning for right now. I need to buy myself a bit of time to get better cards. Uh, I'm about to get something else. Okay, there we go. Okay, now I'm gonna play my next time. Let's see. So I'm going to simply take this man and put him there. Okay. So, to kind of explain my thought process and what's going on right now, uh, as you can see, I am currently in an area where I have open attack and he has traps I can't act. Having uh, things that don't let him move is really good for me. I know that's a bit obvious, but to kind of explain a little bit more, if I let him have plays, that's really bad because he's going to be able to keep turning my things into traps, and I don't want that. And this way, I can pretty much trade blows in a moment here. Uh, also, let's go for this, because this will be kind of funny. Because Mantis is attacked an arc, meaning I can take out the snake, and now I can do this. I do not want his good cards to get into play, and I need to find one of my good cards. Uh, it is absolutely certain I find one of them. Uh, we can actually continue uh, being mean, and I will slowly whittle him down with Mantises. It's kind of like the, uh, the Karibo strategy, in a way. Which... It's kind of funny to me that that's the strategy I ended up with, but you know what? I keep drawing basic wolves, so it is the strategy we will use. It's an endless battle of attrition as I try to find... I found a grizzly, but I need my five wolf and my, uh, my gek, which uh, I got really unlucky. 
I mentioned earlier the lesson of be- There he is! It took him long enough. Okay, but I still need my Gex, so we'll continue on the way we're going. Where is the Gek? Not there. Maybe one day I'll find the Gek. Uh, I don't want to win yet! Because if I win, I can't pass the bear phase. Where is the Gek? <laughs> I don't know where he is. Oh, Glard. Wow, he's at the bot. Alright, we'll be fine. I can give him the next turn. Okay, so this will be fun. Yep, that is correct, Marley. Okay, so too fast, too soon. Heart of the cards, I got the grit. You know what? This will be fun. Uh, this will be really fun in a moment here. Uh, I want to get very creative with my strategy. So, my special man. Uh, we are going to do this. And I'm going to force him to skip his turn. Uh, this is going to be nice. Because now he is not able to take his turn. This is why having that item was good. Also, look who finally decided to show up. I'm going to do something called overkill. Anyway, that shouldn't have worked. It worked. I don't know why that took the way it did, but it worked. And I managed to skip the unskippable bears. Hooray! Okay. So luckily, we're on the final boss now. Or, yeah, hopefully the final boss. Uh, I got... Uh, I'm going to take this guy just in case. So there we go. And I don't really get scared too often. I kind of played so many games. Uh, yeah, that was uh, some horrible luck. If you went for record, you would have reset already. Anyway, I want to chop down my deck. I have a huge amount of cards. I, I need to whittle that a lot. So I'm getting rid of one of these mantises, and I'm going to give it to uh, the grizzly. Actually, give it to this guy. Ah, let's go to the grizzly. He's more reliable. Hooray for the grizzly. Okay, so, unfortunately, everyone, I now need to hope that the Gek once again makes his appearance. You know, for a card that I hyped up so much, he's really not doing the work I asked him to do. Also, now the game will be changing. We are on the final boss. Uh, the final boss is pretty easy, um, surprisingly enough. Well, kind of easy. It's going to be weird because I'm going to kind of undo some of his mechanics. Uh, also, we're going to possibly get some boons. We have to win a challenge. Uh... We're going to go with the middle challenge. I don't know why I went with the middle challenge. Either way, I wouldn't have won anyway. So it's all fine. All right, rare card, water. Let's go with the rare. All right, I won this challenge. I think I get a boon. I want to... I think I can look at my hand. Let's see. I get one of them. Which one is it? Not bones. Not... Actually, that's not bad. Uh, there we go. That's going to be the special friend. The magpie's eye. Uh, that's going to allow me to pick any card from my deck. You know, this is actually kind of good, because now I don't need to worry too much. Uh, boons are going to be a special way of me cheating. Anyway, here is the final boss of this run, Moon Percent. This is Leshy. Uh, this is the guy who's been cheating the whole time by summoning eight bears when he loses the game. In fairness, I've been taking knives to his cars and cutting them in front of him, so we'll let bygones be bygones as we have our final duel. Uh, luckily for me, I will have a smoke going into this, so I do get an extra spawn. However, he will have three lives. Now, Leshy has three phases. Phase one for Leshy will be rare cards. Uh, he is only going to be playing rare cards. I still need to hope for the luck of the draw. Uh, hopefully, I don't get something too bad. All right, I got my friend the Gek. Uh, I don't actually want to use him immediately, though, funny enough. Um, maybe I do. I feel like if I use the Gek immediately, though, he's going to do something to me, and I don't want him to do something to me. But, uh... Let's just play this nice and safe. And in fact, let me show you a fun cheese. So, the Mole Man's going to attack whatever is, uh, you know, attacking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to summon the Wolf, and I'm going to put him right here. What that will do is I'll prevent his other spawn from coming in, and the reason why I just wanted to go for the Wolf and not the Gek is because I want to get more cards out. Uh, actually, where is my man? Uh, we can win this really fast. If Wait, where is he? Where? There you are. So, the Mega Wolf is not going to be even play yet, and um, the reason why is because he's going to turn my stuff into gold. Gold is bad. See? He cheats. Uh, he does get some good damage out of me, but that is A-OK. -okay. Uh, what's going to happen now? Oh, God, no. Wait, am I going to... Can I do this? Wait. Wait. 
Oh, I can, but I don't like that. Wait, can I? Oh. Huh. I didn't think that through. Oh, no, I did. I did. Oh, uh, we did. I. Hmm. Well, let's try something out here. I think I gotta do it. I gotta do it. This is a suck. Wait, can't? No, I can't win anyway. This is called cheating. Yes, the Gek is good because he is just a squirrel. Let's try that roll again. Wait, where does it put me, though? Put... I can do the boon challenge again. Anyway, this is why we have a 40 minute estimate. Oh, go in the. There we go. Okay. Um. Hey, I actually won the boon. I won two boons this time. Although, I kind of want the other one. Alright, let's see. Uh, furs, bones, black goat on the board. Black goat. There we go. The game crowd, right? I can't believe it. And rare card. There we go. It's a great game. If you haven't played this, it's much longer than the way it's going to be, by the way. So, like, it's super worth playing. All right. Now we may go, right? I can't believe the game sure likes to crash mid-game. I'm sure nothing else happened there. All of that because I wanted to show off the cool Gek strategy. This game likes to cheat against you, so cheat against it as well. Okay. So, same thing is going to happen. We're going to get our smoke. We're going to be having the rare card round. I should get the same hand too, which I did. it wasn't a bad hand. I get a black goat this time. So, what I get to do is the same exact thing, but this time I don't have to waste all my stuff. same deal. Uh, we're going to be killing him and I am going to be then uh, let's do where is my guy? There you are. Let's do this, by the way. So, this is going to be a cheeky move. Uh, the reason why is it's going to buy me a little bit more health. There we go. Alrighty, so now that my hand's not totally shafted, now the game gets fun. So the Gek is going to go here, uh, and then my friend, the Super Wolf, is going to go right here. I will still need to win the next hand. That's fine. Uh, well, actually, I may have messed that up. Ooh, wait a minute. Oh, no. Wait, that's bad. Uh, okay. I may have messed that up. Just a little bit. Uh, you know, let's try it out. Let's try it out. I don't think I can win now. Yeah. Yeah. Back to cheating. This is the main thing I was concerned about. Also, for anyone who is joining on in, this is speedruns from the crypt. Uh, we have to show a lot of spooky games. Impending crash, right? I can't believe it happened again. The game just keeps crashing right on the moon. I can't believe it. There we go. Still can't cheat properly, right? I can't believe it. The goat will still be good. Uh, rare card. Alright, so let's go. Oh my god, I'm dumb. Wait a minute, I'm dumb. I just noticed something. I'm really dumb. <laughs> Never mind, we're fine. Uh, this is gonna be easy. 
Uh, I realize I'm using a, uh, a card that I should have been doing. You ever just, like, your brain just starts activating for some reason? All right, no, we're fine. Uh, this is gonna be easy. It should be easy now. You know what? We're still having it under that. Should be. Hey, we didn't only skip eight bears once. We skipped it twice. Anyway, yes, uh, here's the here's what we're going to be doing. Because I just thought of something. Anyway, uh, here's a fun trick. As I just realized what we've been getting. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is I can't win in one turn, but wait, actually can I win in one turn? Wait, I can win in one turn. Wait, no I can't. No, I can't win in one turn. Wait. No, not one turn. I can win in two turns though. So, this time instead what I'm going to do, same idea. Instead though... Oh... Wait a minute, now I know why that... Let's just win immediately. Uh... Wait, oh my god, I... I did it again. That's fine. Ah, I'd rather get to the next phase. Let's just keep going. So, you don't get to see the Gex strategy, I'll just describe it to you. Wait a minute. Never mind. You know what I realized? I realized something. I know why that doesn't work. Alright. I know why that doesn't work. What's happening? It's called... I forgot. I can't? I can. I remember what it was going to be. I remembered what I had to do. I remembered it now. Alright, let's do this again. It'll be easy. Stay in school, exactly. That's the moral. So, the strategy I was going to be doing, and I will be doing, once I uh, get it going, is I'm going to save the Black Wolf. Uh, oh, where's the rare card? Is this one? I'm going to save the Black Wolf, uh, the black Goat in order to summon this man. Right, this man's allowed to turn into gold. I just need Gek to not turn into gold. That's the main thing. You know, when I get it, I'm going to say I got it first try. That's the main idea. That is the plan. We're saying it is first try when we get it on the first try. Yeah, my brain overloaded for a moment. I got... You ever get, like, really hungry? Like, your eyes are bigger than your stomach? I had that for me. Okay, so what's going to happen this time... Right, I'm, I'm cool with him turning into gold. What's going to happen this time is this. I'm going to play a squirrel, and I'm going to play the stoat. There we go. And then I'm going to do... wait. Really? Oh. Okay, then. I just realized I'm dumb. There. I did it. It worked out. It all worked out. It took a bit to get there, but you know what? It worked out. Anyway, where's the... Hold on, what do I have again? I don't remember what I have. I'm gonna take the grizzly. The grizzly will be my friend. Alright, I have enough. Cool. Uh, okay. So... There we go, round two is melee cheating. So, the whole reason, I'm still going underestimate by the way, is the funniest part. I know, I see my estimate, I'm still gonna be underestimate. Because he summons the moon. The whole moon. It's called moon percent, because we're going to kill the moon. All right, I gotta think really hard. I gotta get the rally, gotta get a new card. I uh, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat really quick, hold on. I'm gonna sacrifice everything. I'm gonna get rid of all my cards here. I'm gonna get rid of everything. I'm gonna get rid of, all three of my cards, put them in this corner, and then the Gek. Alright, ready? Woo! GG! Time. So the Gek can one-shot the moon if he's poison.
<laughs> that is the whole thing I wanted to show off. And that is how you beat it. We've destroyed the moon, and now I get to finish him off. I still do need to win the duel, but I'll let Gek do the honor. Good job, Mr. Gek. But that was time. Hey, you know, I got it right under the estimate. I had a feeling it would work. We literally Exodia. He sent him to the Shadow Realm. But that's how it goes. I hope you all enjoyed the inscription. Oh, uh, did I just... We get a cake. Clutch estimate. I had a feeling clutch estimate. We did it. We got it. It all worked out. But yeah, that was Inscription, and I hope you all enjoyed this game. Um, this game is kind of trippy because it has it has a long game. Uh, this is only the first chapter, uh, but they actually do give you like a little arg kind of thing here. So, uh, I have been Ecdysis. Uh, if you have enjoyed this run, feel free to check me out. I stream a bunch of different horror games of many different types. Uh, this is a fun game. I do like doing this game, but I kind of I do like everything. I run over 100 games, and I do run Speeders in the Crypt here. Um, I don't normally, um, you know, do this all the time, where I always fill in for runners. Um, but, you know, given today's circumstances, I do hope that you enjoyed this. And, uh, yeah, uh, I do want to say thank you all for watching. Uh... We'll go to our regular end of the show now, because we can do that. Uh, but yeah, this has been a, sh a show celebrating releases of 2021 and some of the cool horror games. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff that releases in the world of horror, and there's will be plenty more cool stuff coming out. Uh, in two weeks, we'll be having Resident Evil Village back, and I'll probably pair some other game to that, that hopefully I can find something thematic. Uh, it is unfortunate when we do have runners get sick, but these things happen, and, you know, pe we're human, so it's A-OK. -okay. Yes, clearly I got it down to the buzzer beater so I can have the last second win. That that is the exact thing I did. I definitely I definitely wasn't losing every time. I had to make it dramatic so we can beat the moon with the poison. So, I do want to say thank you for watching Speeders in the Crypt. I have been your host, Dick Dices. Uh, if you ever do want to check out or hear any of this stuff, you can check me out on things like Twitter, um, you know, uh, YouTube, Twitch. I'm on all these platforms under the name of Dices. It's somewhere down here, and that is the best way of being able to find me. I do talk about this quite often. Uh, we will be back in two weeks, uh, like I said, with the Resident Evil Village. But for now, have a wonderful rest of the day and or night. And have a good one.